Well, 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 here we are doing another one of these. Uh, the last one took about like three weeks to upload, so I'm going to assume this one will be up late April. I'm recording this intro on the 9th of April, 2022, so I will be interested to see how long this takes. People really seem to enjoy that Elden Ring boss ranking, and I have played a lot more Dark Souls than I've played Elden Ring, and I prefer Dark Souls, truly. I still love Elden Ring, though. However, I would like to do a boss ranking for all of the Dark Souls games, the entire Dark Souls trilogy right here, right now. So, without any further introduction, let's get to it. The Dark Souls trilogy boss ranking easiest to hardest. Let's go. Hey, this is Future Joey on April 23rd on the last day of recording for this video. I completely forgot Yorm the Giant on this entire list. So just imagine after Executioner's Chariot, I'm not going to spoil where that is, right after Executioner's Chariot is where I would put Yorm the Giant. So yeah, you can enjoy that. Uh, I fucked up. Uh, so yeah, uh, here's the first entry. Sorry about that. To nobody's surprise, really, the easiest boss in all of Dark Souls is Pinwheel. I've been told that people have died to this boss, which is crazy. I heard Jerma died to this boss and he never lived it down, so never die to this boss, especially on stream, you will never be forgiven for it. Pinwheel has a couple attacks, apparently, one of which where he duplicates himself and makes a bunch of shadow clones, and that does absolutely nothing for him whatsoever, because if you hit him twice, he dies. That's about it. He also has this big fireball move, which admittedly will hurt if you let him get it off. However, if you let him get it off, I will question your sanity because there's no way a sane person would even be able to let him do that. And he'll die like the human centipede offspring that he is. Difficulty is 3 out of 100 because he, although he is very easy, he is not as easy as the soldier of Godric. Coming in at a little bit more of a challenge is Dark Souls 2's favorite little chubby boy. That's right, it's Nikocado Avocado. He has several moves. One, where he rolls over, and it will hurt. It will hurt. But if you get hit by this, you're actually insane, because it has the biggest and most telegraphed attack, I think, in any boss ever. He will, like, shift his weight to the left for about five seconds, and you can just walk. You can literally just walk a little bit, and you won't be hit by it. His second attack is he is going to shift his weight a little bit and do a tail swipe. That's great. The next one is he's going to try to eat you, which I don't think I've ever seen him do this, but I've seen videos of it, so I'm going to include it. He's going to eat you and spit you out with none of your armor, which is a really cool idea if he did it more than once in a blue moon. Another thing he can do is he can jump up, kind of. I don't know what to call it. He doesn't jump up. He like lifts his upper body a little bit in the air and then slam into the ground. And he just does a little bit of damage, but it is the most telegraphed fat slob thing you'll ever see in your life. Difficulty is 4 out of 100. It's a butterfly. Next. Now, uh, the Moonlight Butterfly is going to lazily float around this really cool idea of an arena, which is just a big bridge. Reminds me of the Zaldan Bridge from Kingdom Hearts 2. I play a lot of Kingdom Hearts, can you tell? And he has about four attacks total. Number one, he is going to shoot, I believe, six little shotgun blasts twice in a row. And if you get hit by them, it does four damage. That's about it. You can roll left or right of him, sure, but why would you do that? Just That just takes more time. Just fucking take it, who cares? He has a just giant pin missile attack that's gonna hit you. It does a little bit more damage than the shotgun burst, but literally nothing to be worried about. He has a, his third attack is where he's gonna summon three little pin missiles that might hit you. That's about it. When I first came into this boss, I was really scared. I'm not going to lie, the first time I played this game, I was terrified of this thing because I thought I wasn't going to be able to kill it because I had no range options. But after a little while, he's going to float down to the bridge and just sit there and let you hit him. With no repercussions at all. <laughs> he's going to explode after the amount of time it takes to watch the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy. But honestly, even if you don't have the DPS to kill him, just after you hit him to about half health, just walk away for a bit. 
He's not hard. Difficulty is 5 out of 100. Have I mentioned how I like actually in Dark Souls 2, some bosses have this cutscene where it looks like a, like a veiny eye is appearing on your screen, like when something dangerous is near you? That's kind of cool. That being said, that's about all the credit I'm going to give to Dark Souls 2, except for a couple cool bosses and the fact that there's life gems. People that know me lo know I love life gems. God, I fucking love them. Wish they were in every game. The last giant is a last giant, and he remembers you. Trust me, you'll understand why I said that later. He has a couple of attacks where he's just going to lazily kind of swipe at you with his hands, or he might stomp on you with his feet, which, which will actually do a little bit of damage. And it's going to be pretty tough to deal with, probably, if you've never played a Dark Souls game before. But considering this is Dark Souls 2 and not Dark Souls 1, or Demon Souls, you probably have played a Dark Souls game before. I don't know what insane person starts with Dark Souls 2. You're crazy if you do. This is probably the first boss you're going to run into in this game, so it won't be that big of a problem. And like the Fire Giant, whoa, they're both a giant. Why do giants like to dismember themselves in FromSoft games? That's really odd. He's going to take off of his arm, although he's not going to sacrifice it to the gods like the fire giant in Elden Ring. He's going to just try to swipe at you with it like a sword. Which, coincidentally, I also do when I get low health. That was a joke I made in the Elden Ring video, and I'm bringing it back. If you just stay near his ankles and whack him for a bit, he'll eventually fall down like the giant wounded puppy he is. Difficulty is 5 out of 100. Prowling Magus and Congregation might be the longest name for a boss in the, in the entire Dark Souls trilogy. We're not counting Gang Squad because they have a nickname. This guy just literally is called Prowling Magus and Congregation. What a name. Prowling Magus and Congregation is a very easy boss in Dark Souls 2, where he's going to be a big guy in the center of the room with a skull on his face. He looks really cool, admittedly, although this boss is just fucking easy. He has a giant skull in his face, and he's going to cast magic at you from a distance. He has about 20 health or so, so if you just whack him for about 30 seconds, lie. Then he has about, I want to say, 10 people in his congregation, 8 of which or so are little crawling dudes that are dying, and you might as well just finish them off anyway. They, sh they should give you a medal for killing the elderly on their last leg. And at two healers that is going to heal the congregation and Magus at all times. This boss isn't hard. It's a big, wide-open room with some pews. But if you just kill them, they can't be healed. I know that sounds like obvious, but like, kill the little ones first if you want, and they can't be healed, or kill Magus first, which he won't be able to be revived. This boss isn't hard at all. Difficulty is 5 out of 100. Crossbreed Priscilla. I've actually met someone in real life named Priscilla, even though I thought this was literally a fantasy name, but she was pretty cool. Is a giant dragon lady thing, I guess? Wearing a white robe and bare feet. And she's not that hard at all. I can understand how some people might die to this fight, because if you don't understand the gimmick, it is kind of annoying. But as soon as you go in there, she's going to beg you not to fight her, as if she knows you'd be able to kill her. And just ignore her pleas for help, because you are a villain in the story. And just attack her. She's going to turn invisible immediately, kind of like how Freed does. We'll get to Freed way later in the fucking list. And if you look where her feet are in the ground... You'll be able to see where she is. And she does a couple attacks, I guess. She's going to try to hit you with her scythe, which does blood loss, but, like, it doesn't matter. As you see in this clip, I'm literally wearing no armor, and it still hardly hurts me. So, it's not that big of a deal if she hits you. She has this thing where she blows ice into the ground, and it's not that hard to deal with. Just don't be right in front of her. If you hit her in the tail, she's actually going to give you a free weapon. So you might as well do that. But normally, she's not going to be that big of a challenge for you. Difficulty is 6 out of 100. Ancient Wyvern is a gimmick fight, surprisingly, even though it doesn't look like it would be when you run into the arena, that you're gonna probably blow right through real fast. This is also our first Dark Souls 3 boss, so that's interesting. The Ancient Wyvern is a giant wyvern that's gonna crash down onto you while you're in the extremely hard optional area of the game, which is weird because this is one of the easiest bosses in the game and one of the hardest optional areas. All you have to do is run past him and go to the left. There's going to be a long winding path you can go up, which is weird for a boss arena, because usually you're locked into a place. 
But if you run all the way up, and you're gonna get to a bunch of guys that are gonna be guarding like a bunch of scaffolding. One in particular is a giant axe that he throws around with a chain on it that will wipe the floor with you if you're not careful. So just try to avoid him or run past him. Just go up on the scaffolding, drop down a couple of stages, and you're going to be able to plunging attack the Ancient Wyvern for this entire health bar. You can fight the Ancient Wyvern without actually doing this gimmick fight, but I've never actually done that. But good luck trying to do that. Difficulty is 6 out of 100 when you use the gimmick. The iconic first Dark Souls boss you'll ever run into if you play the order like a normal person. The Asylum Demon has a giant stick and a fat ass. That's all he's got. He's either going to try to jump up, slam you, or he's going to try to hit you with the stick. That's pretty much the only attacks he's got. When you first walk in, I didn't know this the first time I played Dark Souls, but you have to run to your left and there's going to be an open gate so you can go and get above him for an easier attack. Also, you'll get your weapon and everything you chose, so that's how you get those. If you do this, you'll go up right above him and you'll be able to plunging attack him for probably half his HP, depending on what weapon you have. Once you do that, you'll have a very easy time killing this guy with whatever weapon, and you can just beat him up until he's dead. Or you can just throw 10 black fire bombs at him, that's easy too. Difficulty is 7 out of 100. The Giant Lord is literally the last giant. They're the exact same boss, only this one you went back in time to fight, and that's why the first one knows who you are. Time travel's a great mechanic in video games, isn't it? I don't understand a single fucking thing that's going on. This boss you run into pretty late game, in fact this might be your like, fourth to last boss you even fight, maybe fifth, and he is the exact same almost. And he has a little bit more health, not that much, and he has a sword this time, so he basically has that hand that he ripped off earlier, the entire time. That's it though. It's kind of hard to see where the sword's gonna come from, but that's it. Honestly, go hog wild. He ain't gonna do anything to you. Plus you get shit tons of souls just walking in here. Difficulty is 8 out of 100. This extremely boring fight is the Guardian Dragon. The only saving grace about this fight is the arena is really cool. I like that you're in a giant cage. It's kind of a cool idea. Too bad that this boss is asshole. The Guardian Dragon spends about 85% of this fight in the air, so just be ready to either use magic, ranged, or just wait for it to fucking go down on its feet again. Which happens about every once in a minute. And you'll be able to get two or three hits in, and then he's gonna do it again. This boss isn't hard at all. In fact, it's kind of laughable how easy it is for how late in the game it is for Dark Souls 2. But he has about two attacks, pretty much, with variations on the attack, I guess. One of which is he's going to fly up, which he's going to spend most of his time doing, grappling onto the side of his cage and blowing fire at you, or blowing a fireball at you, or spraying while he's flying. It's not hard to dodge like most fire in Dark Souls games. You literally just walk to the edge of the cage and it's like almost impossible to hit you. His other attack is he has just basic attacks where he'll swing his head at you or try to step on you. <laughs> it's got a huge wind up. It just, it's sad because this is such a cool boss arena and it's after a really cool area in the game and it's just kind of shit. Difficulty is 9 out of 100. This fight, although not very widely liked, I like a good amount actually. The Dragon Rider is just the most basic big enemy boss you're going to find in any Dark Souls game probably. There's a way you can kill him immediately if you don't raise any of the platforms and I think he either takes 7 or 8 steps forward. And then you try to dash at him, and then if you do it right, he'll fall off the edge and insta-kill himself. I don't know how to do that, so I don't really give a shit. But it is like a tango. You're going to fight with this guy, and every time he swings, walk to the left or to the right. It doesn't matter which, usually. Just walk to the left or to the right, but stay on him like white on rice. He will miss you. Every time. Even if he doesn't, it'll do about four damage. So, yeah. He can knock you off the edge, though, if you're not careful, so be careful of that, I suppose, if anything. He has a decent, actually, health bar for how early in the game he is. He has a decent-sized health bar, not even gonna lie. But he doesn't pack that much of a punch, and, and he's kind of a pushover if you actually have legs. So that's cool, I guess. And later you're gonna find him and his twin brother. And it's gonna be a little harder, but not too much harder. Difficulty is 10 out of 100. Welcome to a boss that turns into an enemy later. Dark Souls likes to do that a lot. The Taurus Demon here is on a bridge, just like Zaldan from Kingdom Hearts 2. I'm going to keep using that reference, you can't stop me. And he's going to do everything in his power to knock you off, because that's the only way he's going to be able to kill you, trust me. Before you walk up to this fight, do yourself a favor and turn around as soon as you go into the fog wall and climb the ladder. There's going to be a bunch of guys with bows and arrows, go fight them. Fuck those guys, that would make this fight a lot harder. And if you don't do it, this fight's going to be like a four-on-one, so just do it. Also, if you want to cheese it, you can stay up there too and just keep plunging attacking the Taurus Demon, but I'm not a coward, so... 
if you have the gold pine resin too, that also makes this fight way easier. I believe if you have the master key is the only way you can get it, but I could be wrong. Tell me in the comments if I'm wrong about that. I don't know what I'm doing in this footage. I'm actually a brick. I just like let it beat me up for the first half of this fight. I don't know what the fuck was wrong with me. But this thing does not have that much health. He's going to swing around at you. He has a move that can knock you off the bridge pretty easily. So be careful of when he shoves his hammer into the ground. Or I don't know what the fuck it is. Because he might be able to knock you off that way. Other than that, he doesn't have that much health. You fight this guy really early in the game. There's not much to say. Difficulty is 11 out of 100. Welcome to the best quote-unquote tutorial boss in a Dark Souls game. Ayudex Gundir? I don't know what the fuck that word is, dude. Deal with it. Has a giant halberd and he's going to swing it all around at you. But it's pretty easy to just sidestep or roll under it. They're very strong attacks for tutorial boss for sure. However, it, the wind-ups are huge so it gives you plenty of ample time to be able to dodge under it or sidestep it. It's not that big of a deal. And believe it or not, you can actually parry these attacks too. So that's something cool. If you're good at parrying, that'd be great. About half health, he's going to turn into a Puss of Man, which is a very disgusting name. But that is the official name, so I'm going to use it. And all of his attacks become more weird and like exaggerated. The health of the attacks is no longer there, as well as most of the hitboxes are all greatly exaggerated. So just do your best to take out as much health as you can in the first phase, and then just hope for the second phase to go smooth. It can be difficult, and it is the hardest tutorial boss in a Dark Souls game, but I believe it is the most fair and the most fun. Difficulty is 12 out of 100. You would expect someone named the Old Iron King to be a very difficult boss, or at least it seems like it would be, but he is really not. He has about four moves, one of which where he's going to slam his fists into the ground and then leaves it there for way too long. He has a move where he's going to blow fire all, all over the stage, which you can just go to the back left or the back right of the arena and it won't touch you whatsoever. He has one where he's going to try to sweep you into that fire pit, which don't worry, everybody gets it in there every, one, every once in a while. And that's about it, honestly. He, can, he just leaves his fist too long on the ground and you can hurt him forever pretty much he's not a difficult fight at all even though the area before this is hell difficulty is 12 out of 100 this guy looks familiar old dragon slayer is just ornstein from dark souls 1 who spoiler might be in the top 10 hardest in the games he is a really fast son of a bitch that's for sure although his attacks don't do much and without Smo trying to beat you up with a hammer he can't really do much he has basic swipe attacks with his giant thunder spear thing i don't fucking know what it's called but he is very easy to predict, and he is even slower than he was in Dark Souls 1. Difficulty is 13 out of 100. Welcome to another gimmick fight of Dark Souls 3, if you want to call it that. The Deacons of the Deep are going to have about 25 Deacons just roaming around a coffin for some reason. I don't know the lore of this one. I thought I knew Dark Souls 4 pretty well. I have no fucking idea why these Deacons are just sitting here. And one is going to be glowing red. It's kind of like how Renala of the Full Moon in Elden Ring, one of the children is glowing yellow and they hit him. Only this one, the deacon you have to hit is glowing red. Hit it and you'll eventually lose a little health on the health bar. Keep doing this over and over and over and over and over until it gets to about half health where a pope is going to spawn with the red glow on him and it's going to be like that for the rest of the entire fight. This becomes a little bit more dangerous because they have a giant curse orb that I'm not sure how to get away from because your entire screen just turns black and you have a limited amount of time to kill him or you're going to get cursed with it. I don't know how to dodge that, so good luck. He also spawns a bunch of bigger guys in that are a little bit harder to deal with, so just stay away from them as best you can. These guys are a little bit tougher than everyone else on this list so far, so I'm going to give them a difficulty of 15 out of 100. The Crystal Sage of Dark Souls 3. This one, I'm not even going to lie, I've actually died quite a few times to this boss. I don't even know why, because it is such an easy boss. I just am ass, I guess. The Crystal Sage has just some various magic attacks. He's going to shoot crystals at you, or he can put soul spears on his shoulders to be shot at you at a later date. Or he can launch a giant crystal ball at you that will probably do a little bit of damage. And at about half health, he's going to go into the ground, and he is going to spawn a bunch of other Crystal Sages that are going to fire blue crystals at you. Don't fight those, because they aren't the one. They aren't the real one. The one with purple crystals are the one you're going to want to go and attack. I used to think wherever the crystals spawn on the ground is where he could spawn, so I always ran over him, but I don't think that's the case, so I just run into the crystals. I don't know what they're even for, to be honest. But he is not too big of a deal. You can even parry this guy. Difficulty is 16 out of 100. Dark Sun Gwendolyn. They're a really interesting boss, and I would even put this close to my top 10 favorite bosses in all of Dark Souls, but this is going to be probably one of the two honorable mentions for that list, so I've probably put this at 12 if I had to. Dark Sun Gwendolyn is a very unique boss. 
They have a total of, I want to say, three moves. Like, that's it. But you're going to be in a giant, long, stretching hallway that is infinite. And they're going to teleport away every time you get close, after one or two hits, if you're lucky. One of the three attacks is they're going to spawn a shit ton of little blue orbs that will all rush at you at once after floating there for a second. Be behind a pillar on the left or right side and you'll be fine, it'll completely miss you. The second attack they have is they're going to have a giant soul spear that will go through those pillars, so you're going to have to dodge that one entirely or block it. The third one they're going to have is just a volley of arrows that hurt like hell if they all hit you. So either be behind a wall or have a shield. This fight is unique. I don't know if I'd call this a gimmick fight. I guess I would. But basically, you just want to get in close as much as you can and just whack at them whenever you get a chance. I don't know what I'm doing in this clip where I'm literally just standing out in the open trying to heal sometimes. It is completely the wrong thing to do. Don't do what I'm doing here. But they don't have that much health and they're not too hard to deal with. Difficulty is 17 out of 100. The Ceaseless Discharge is a massive hunk of meat that's going to spray fire at you or hit you with these little bone hand things. I don't know what they are. But my best strat here is either run back to the beginning, where you can one-shot him when he's out of lava or something like that, or wait for him to blow a shit ton of fire with his hand on the ground and then just do attack his hand. Everything he does does fuck tons of damage and you're going to have to heal, so just don't get hit forehead. He's not too bad, just as stupid as it sounds, don't get hit. Be extremely lay on your feet and make sure it doesn't touch you. Difficulty is 20 out of 100. The Skeleton Lords. These guys are going to be three imposing looking skeletons on thrones, which is a really cool idea and the arena is pretty cool too. Now you have these three Skeleton Lords and each time you kill one it spawns more. One of them spawns a couple bone wheel skeletons, which thank god aren't the Dark Souls one kind. One spawns like 50 fucking little skeletons that barely do anything, but together they're really annoying. And then one spawns a couple with huge armor on. You could fight them all at once if you really wanted to. You could take out all three big guys and then spawn all the little ones at once and try to deal with it that way. But in my opinion, the easier thing to do is take out one big skeleton lord, then take out all the mobs he spawns. Then take out the next big skeleton lord, take out all the mobs he spawns, take out the third skeleton lord, and take out all the mob cheese spawns. It's a lot easier this way, and you won't be overwhelmed as hard. Difficulty is 20 out of 100. Yada yada vagina joke. Not to be confused with the much harder belt free gargoyles, this one is going to be almost immediately after you get out of the first main area of Dark Souls 1 the Undead Parish. To reach one of the bells, you're going to have to fight a big ass gargoyle with a halberd as a tail, or an axe as a tail, I don't remember what it is. And he is going to fuck you up. He can knock you off that roof as much as he wants. And he can whack the shit out of you with his with his actual axe, not his tail axe. And it's going to hurt pretty fucking bad. This boss was the first boss, I think, when I was playing Dark Souls 1 for the first time that gave me a shit ton of trouble. It's not as hard nowadays, obviously, because I've played so many harder bosses. But this will be kind of hard if you've never played a Dark Souls game before. Once he gets to about half health, he's going to spawn in another gargoyle, but this one's going to breathe fire at you too, and then the first one's also going to start breathing fire at you too. Try to take them one and one as best you can, and you should be able to come out on top. The difficulty is 23 out of 100. All right, here we go. Here's an unpopular opinion. I fucking love Aldia Scholar, the first one. 
he would be the second honorable mention for my top 10 favorite bosses in the series. Aldia is such a cool boss. I love the way he speaks. I love the way he comes back and forth throughout your journey and talks to you. I love that he's kind of like the final secret boss. And yes, this is a final boss this low. And I just love his music track as well. It's such a good fight and it's not that hard, which makes it a little worse, but it's still really good. And I fucking love Aldia. He only has probably five or six attacks, honestly. He's going to spawn immediately, and he's going to have fire around him so you can't hit him, or not hit him that well at least. Every time he comes out of the ground though, he's going to be vulnerable for a few seconds, so take that opportunity to attack. One of his attacks, he's going to spawn a bunch of little homing soul fire arrows above him, which lazily float towards you and it doesn't really do much, but you can still take the damage from it for sure. He makes a giant fireball for one, which is by far his most dangerous attack. Where if it hits you, even with my chunky ass health bar in this clip, it almost one shots me, so be careful of that. He's going to start summoning a bunch of tree branches on the ground that spread that spring up from the ground, and it's really dangerous if they hit you, because they can stun lock you. He also has a couple other fire-based attacks that aren't that big of a deal. I truly like this boss, and I don't understand why people don't like it. I'm a Dark Souls 2 apologist, however, so be careful of listening. Difficulty is 23 out of 100. Ironically, the next boss we're going to talk about is way earlier in the game. The Flexile Sentry is going to be in the bottom of the ship. I don't know what the... I'm not a sailor, so I don't know what the bottom of the ship is called. He's going to be a Siamese twin, or they are going to be a Siamese twin, I suppose. And they're going to have two sides, one with swords and one with maces. The mace side is much less dangerous, and you want to have him facing you most of the time. The sword side can do way more fucking damage, and it will slice you up and kill you almost instantly. So just try to face the mace side at all times, or be in the middle so you can just stab them when they can't hit you at all. That's probably better. Something interesting about this boss that has never been done before is it's kind of on a time limit almost. Because the water at the bottom of your feet is going to keep arising throughout it. So you're not going to be able to roll as fast, or you're going to be extremely slow walking. It's kind of annoying. Difficulty is 24 out of 100. Alright, three Dark Souls 2 bosses in a row. The Twin Dragon Riders can either be the biggest joke or a really big annoyance depending on how you do it. You have two options here. Try to take down the first guy really fast so you can fight the archer really fast after. Or you can fight the first guy for a little bit then when the archer comes down beat him the fuck up because he has about 50 HP total you could probably hit him twice and he'll die and then focus on the first guy again. I prefer the latter strat because I hate the archer guy. FromSoft has a bad habit of having of having a dual boss encounter, and it's widely not in your favor. Or it's too much in your favor, depending on how they do it. This boss is kind of in the middle for once. It's still a shitty boss, don't get me wrong, because it's just two dragon riders. But it's a lot more balanced than most dual encounters. Difficulty is 24 out of 100. Nishandra, the original final boss for Dark Souls 2, and yes, this is the fourth Dark Souls 2 boss in the room, isn't very hard, like, at all. She has a couple attacks that are, I guess, dangerous if you get hit by them, but they are the easiest and most telegraphed attacks on the planet, so it's not that big of a deal. One of them is she's going to fire a giant dark ray that probably hurts really bad, but I have literally never been hit by it, so I assume that it's really bad, but, like, it is the biggest wind-up on the planet, so it's not that big of a deal. She has a move where she spawns a bunch of curse orbs that don't really matter in the slightest because curse in Dark Souls 2 does like actually nothing pretty much. Especially if this is going to be the final boss who cares if you get cursed. And she has some basic scythe attacks that literally uh, any random enemy could have and it wouldn't be that big of a deal. 
She definitely does some damage though on like some of the earlier bosses, so don't try to so try not to be hit by her extremely telegraphed attacks. Difficulty is 25 out of 100. The Omen Killer, <clears throat> I mean the Capper Demon, is largely carried by his arena. This is a boss that's gonna come in later in the game as a normal enemy. Oh look that weird Dark Souls trope that happens a lot. And he has two big axes that he's gonna swing at you, which he is not the problem. His arena is the problem. He's going to have a bunch of little dogs in the arena that can bleed you and will rush you immediately, and if you don't kill them immediately, you lose pretty much. However, if you can manage to run past them and get on the little archway behind him, you can plunging attack him and probably kill him in two hits. Difficulty is 27 out of 100. Ava the King's Pet is the first Dark Souls boss if you're going alphabetically. And he or she, I don't know which it is, I'm not trying to fucking misgender the cat, okay? Is kind of a force to be reckoned with. This is a point where the bosses are about average difficulty. It's it's not easy, but it's definitely not hard still. So that's gonna this is gonna be our baseline for like normal a normal boss is Ava the King's Pet. This boss for some reason has really good boss music that if you told me it was Gale's boss music, which is the final boss in the series, I would believe you because the it's just way better than it has any right to be. Here you go, take a listen. Whatever that's about. She has a couple attacks where she's going to summon soul arrows, dark soul arrows that are going to be on her shoulders and she's going to launch them at you. They do a good amount of damage. She's going to swipe at you like any boss but her timing's a little weird so try to go to her sides instead of rolling into her like, like you would with some big bosses. At about half health she's going to do a shockwave attack that's going to shatter a bunch of ice around her and that should be pretty dangerous if you go near her. She has an AoE attack right on her if it looks like she's about to do an AoE attack. She's about to do an AoE attack. I know that's weird to think about. But all in all, this boss isn't too hard. Something to be said, it is an invisible boss if you try to fight this immediately after you get into the DLC. You have to explore the entire area and find a ring or something. I don't remember exactly what it is. To make her visible, then you have to go back and fight her then. Difficulty is 30 out of 100. Well, you're going to be an exterminator day in the Royal Rat Vanguard. There is going to be shit tons of rats in this room and you're gonna have to kill about 20 of them to see the big bad rat with the mohawk for some reason. I don't know why he has one, but that's the bad one. Each one of these are gonna try to hit you and petrify you, which is a scary thing. If you get petrified, you die <laughs> in Dark Souls 2. It's kind of like Curse from Dark Souls 1. When you get to the big boy rat with the mohawk, who doesn't look almost any different, he will poison you instead, which is weird because poison's not, not that big much of a deal and he's the boss, so whatever. And it can be pretty annoying if you don't have a weapon that can kill a bunch at once. But however, it can get stuck on the little statues that are around, so don't try to do giant sweeping attacks because those don't work. You have to fight in pretty much one-on-one -on -one or with a little bit of room. On a side note, I once had an exterminator come to my house when I was like 8 years old, and I'm pretty sure that man killed my dad. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. On a side note, I once had an exterminator come to my house when I was a little kid before I was 10 years old and he said he did the job and he didn't and it got my parents very upset and that's why they're not divorced. Difficulty is 31 out of 100. No, I'm not going to make a boob joke. Scorpionus Najka is a scorpion with a lady front half. It's like a mermaid, but with a scorpion. Because Miyazaki is a sadist. She has some dangerous toxic moves if her, if her stingers on her scorpion body hit you, so just don't get hit by those. And the best thing I learned to do was get really close to her body, attack her a bunch, and then when she winds up, hits you with her little scorpion tail things, back up, let her do that, and then attack the scorpion tails. And keep doing this over and over and over. Eventually she's going to go underground, and you can see where she is, like Tremors, and you want her to stand on a stone piece on the floor. That way she can't go up and grab you. This boss can be fought at literally almost any time in the first half of the game, so it depends on when you go here. If you go here late, you're going to be able to kill her real easily, and if you go here early, she'll probably kill you real easily. Difficulty is 31 out of 100. The Lost Sinner is probably the most generic boss you can get. That being said, it's not bad. It's just a big enemy with the sword. She, because apparently it's a she, 
has a couple unique attacks where she's going to break lock on, I guess, but that's kind of the only unique thing she has. If you don't want to fight her in the dark, you can also light the torches on either side of the arena before you walk through the fog gate, but it really doesn't matter. The only attacks that she can do that break lock on are really easy to dodge too, because if you see your lock on get broke, just fucking run away. I, I like the boss. I truly do. It's just really hard to talk about because she doesn't do anything unique, I guess. Her hitbox for one of her grabs is so fucking broken, I guess. That's worth mentioning. That it's just like, wow. Difficulty is 31 out of 100. Alright, let's get the sad one out of the way. Great Grey Wolf Sif is a giant wolf that was the companion of Artorius, the greatest knight in Gwyn's service. Lore dump. She has a couple of basic normal attacks of big enemies such as like headbutting you or scratching you or doing a tail whip. Just your basic big enemy type thing. But she also has a sword in her mouth that she can swipe at you that does fuck tons of damage and goes right through your shield if you're a shield bitch like I am. She is no joke to deal with and it's very sad because about at one fourth health i want to say maybe a little less she starts limping and all of her attacks become sluggish and easier to dodge you just have to basically put the dog down and feel bad about yourself later a lot of like a lot of people like to think this boss is pretty difficult but honestly i don't well there's gonna be a boss coming up that uh, a lot of people think are a, is a lot easier and i think is a lot harder than people give it credit for and then there's one way later that a lot of people say oh it's the hardest boss in the entire series and i don't even have it in the top 10. Difficulty here is 32 out of 100. Taking the cake for the most disgusting boss in the entire series is the Chris Rod of Greatwood. I'm pretty sure he's also the biggest. I could be wrong about that. Madeira might be bigger, but I don't know. The Chris Rod of Greatwood is going to be sitting in a corner being worshipped by a bunch of weird guys in the corner. He's going to have a bunch of little white pustules, I guess, just all around his body. Just keep hitting them. You can't hurt him normally. You have to break his little bubble things. And every time you break one, it's going to take off a chunk of his health bar. Keep doing this over and over. He has a couple of unique moves where he stands up and sits down and I shit you not, will just blast diarrhea all over the place. He will maybe swipe at you. He has an attack where he like actually just stands the fuck up and it's terrifying and he'll crash down onto you as well. At about half health, he's gonna fall through the entire fucking map and somehow you're not gonna take fall damage. And he's gonna sprout a hand from his stomach, which is coincidental because I also do that when I get hurt. And he's just gonna sprout more pustules and the ones that were blocked in the first stage are not gonna be blocked this time. His hand is gonna swipe at you and it's more dangerous to be in front of him now. Just attack the ones behind him or the ones that aren't in front of him. Or if you're feeling saucy, fuck it, attack the hand. He's not gonna do too much anyway. He hurts, but he's not an extremely hard boss. Difficulty is 33 out of 100. Alright, questionable pick number one. High Lord Wolnir. This boss, I believe, is on people's lower tenth of their lists usually. This boss, to a lot of people, is one of the easiest on the series. To me, I don't know what it is, but this boss usually kills me once or twice per playthrough, and that's more that can be said than even higher bosses on this list. But the only reason it's so low, or I guess in the middle here, is because on paper it is extremely simple and easy. I just can't do it. <laughs> he has a bunch of little rings around his wrists, or I guess wristbands, I'm an idiot, ignore me. And every time you hit one a little bit, it'll break and do about a third of his health bar. Which seems easy because he doesn't really attack you really he'll swing at you every once in a while then he has an attack where he just blows smoke into the ground that has such an odd hitbox that just kills me randomly sometimes i don't know what the fucking hitbox is i can be completely out of it and it'll still kill me i don't know this boss pisses me off just because i can't get the hang of it and it's so considerably easy it just i don't know i can't do it difficulty is 33 out of 100.
the Duke's dear Freya is the exact opposite of what you think that boss would look like. It is a giant spider with two heads. It isn't that tough if you use a torch, which you should definitely use in this fight. If you have a torch, put it on. Because if you don't, you're going to be randomly just ganked by like 50 spiders at a time. Some people like to do it without a torch. Uh, because if you have a torch, you only have one hand. But oh well, I jerk off all the time and I only have one hand. She only has like five or six attacks. One of which she's going to open her mandibles up and crush into you. But you'll know when to fucking move left or right. Because her mandibles are opening really wide. Don't just walk backwards because you'll still be hit. She has a giant laser beam attack. Because most spiders have that, I would think. And then she has an attack where she just switches heads to the other head. All these are not hard to manage, but she does them right after one another, and it can be kind of annoying, and especially if you only have one hand, or there's 50 spiders on you at a time. You can take out all the spiders, but she'll keep spawning more. It's not that hard of a boss, but it's definitely not the easiest in the series, and definitely not the easiest in Dark Souls 2. Difficulty is 35 out of 100. Another one that might be a little too high for people, but he kind of fucks me up every once in a while. Vort of the Boreal Valley is a giant ice human dog thing. That he has a giant mace that if it hits you, it's going to hurt pretty fucking bad, and it will frostbite you as well. He's just kind of a normal beast-like enemy. You don't want to stay on his sides. It's really easy to beat him up if you just stay on his sides and roll into him when he attacks you. You won't be able to do much. And then when he gets to his second phase, first of all, that oh so familiar boss music. Plays, and he's gonna rampage at you, rush at you, where his entire body becomes a hitbox, and it can very much stun lock to your death if you're not careful. He does a lot of damage, trust me, and his second phase is nothing to be stopped at. Once again, try to stay to the side and you should be okay. Every once in a while he's gonna do a giant ice breath thing, and if you get behind him, you have a huge opportunity to knock out like a chunk of his health bar. Difficulty is 36 out of 100. The Pursuer, who appears a lot in this game, hence his name, The Pursuer, is a big old knight in heavy armor and has a giant fucking sword that can curse you if he pierces you, but that doesn't matter because it's Dark Souls 2. He has some very basic attack patterns, but the dude's so fucking chunky that you're going to have to dodge this thing like 50 times. You're going to swing, swing, jump, swing. If you can dodge it once, congrats. If you can dodge it 60 times, you might win. This fight can be a little hard because he does hit like a truck and he has a ton of health, but everything he does is so easily dodgeable, you just can't make a mistake. You could also run up to a ballista and shoot him a bunch, but I'm not a coward, so I don't do that. Difficulty is 36 out of 100. The Rotten is a very fitting name for this thing, and it has one of the most annoying run-ups in the entire series. Which isn't saying much because there are several in Dark Souls 2 that are egregious. He's an amalgamation of bodies, and he's going to have a giant cleaver that he's going to swing at you. It's pretty easy to dodge him, but he has a couple attacks that make him really fucking annoying. One of which where he grabs you and squeezes you and does a shit ton of damage and then throws you onto the ground. Another one where he coughs up uh, darkness onto the ground, I guess? And it'll hurt like a bitch if it hits you too. That being said, there's a fuck ton of fire all around too that if you step in the wrong direction, you're going to get burned too. A little side note to this boss, after you kill him... How hard is it to find the exit to this fucking arena? Because there is smoke all the fuck over this arena, and it's so hard to see the little cave on the side of the room that you're supposed to walk in. Just set. Difficulty is also 36 out of 100. Yeesh, the old Demon King is right. This guy is old. 
This guy has a bunch of fire-based attacks with his club that do a little bit of damage, I guess, so be careful of him, I suppose. His difficulty also widely varies on when you fight him. You can go down here as soon as you get to Karthus if you fucking want and fight him. He's gonna kick your ass, though. Or if you fight him at the end of the game after you killed everything else, he's gonna be cake. He's not that bad of a boss, but you just gotta fight him later rather than sooner. When he gets to about half health, he's gonna coat himself with fire and do even more fire attacks, a couple of which where he's gonna rain meteors on you. So those hurt pretty bad at the hit, even at a high level, it hurts pretty bad. Secondary is when he gets to about one fourth health or so, he's gonna do a ring of fire attack that makes Johnny Cash jealous. And you just need to walk away as fast as you can because after you jump over it, it can come back towards you. So yeah. His last ditch effort, he's gonna stand there for a second and make a giant explosion where he is, which, as you see in this footage, I thought I was far enough away from, and wasn't, and it still hit me, and it does fuck tons of damage. Then after he does that, he's kinda just gonna sit there and let you kill him. I know I say that for bosses that are easy, but he will actually just sit there and let you kill him. Difficulty is 37 out of 100. Method of the Baneful Queen can be one of the hardest bosses in the game if you don't know what you're doing. And I don't know who does know what they're doing, because the only way I figured this shit out was to look it up. Outside this boss arena, there's going to be a giant wooden windmill that you have to burn with a torch of all fucking things before you fight her. Otherwise, the entire arena is going to be coated in poison and she's going to constantly heal from it. How you know to do that? I don't know. But once you do it, the fight becomes just average, I guess. She has some normal spear attacks, normal attacks where she shoots soul spears at you too. Sometimes she'll throw her head at you and it'll explode, and then she'll jump after it like a starving child grasping for scraps at the dinner table. That's a nice thought. And there's still a little bit of poison around the arena, so if she walks in it, she'll heal, the, she'll heal her health bar. So she's a very poison-based attacker. She's kind of a bitch, but cool idea, I guess. Difficulty is 38 out of 100. In my opinion, the coolest gimmick fight in the entire series is the Executioner's Chariot. The entire ring is going to be shaped like a donut. So you're going to want to be running clockwise, I think, and be running towards a lever at the end of the room. There's going to be skeletons trying to fight you the whole time, and every single moment there is a chance to, he's going to try to run you over. He's going to keep going around the ring over and over and over, and once you hear him coming, run into one of the little notches around the ring, and you can sit there and wait for him to pass. Then keep going over and over and over. There's a problem though. All these skeletons are going to be running at you at the exact same time. So either have a shield or kill every single one you come across until you find the witch that's summoning them all and kill her too. Once you take down the lever, it's not as big of a deal. You can just fight it like a giant horse on steroids. But it is a really cool gimmick fight and you can easily get one shot by the giant horse if it hits you. So there is some difficulty here. Difficulty is 39 out of 100. Don't say it, don't think it, don't say it, don't think it, don't say it, don't think it. Chaos Witch Quaylag here has a giant sword and half of a spider body, which is just like my mother. She has a couple basic attacks where she'll swing the sword at you, and it has some ludicrous range, and she'll coat it in fire sometimes and make it even more annoying. As of course she will. You might go into this fight being poisoned if you don't have any moss, because you want to run through a poison swamp to get here, because I fucking hate Blight Town. She has some other attacks where she's going to burp up fire from her spider body, I guess. And it's going to coat the arena and it's going to lock parts of the arena off and it won't go away. So that's kind of a unique thing. Or she also has a giant AoE attack that if she looks like she's about to like shit kinda, it's going to be that giant AoE attack. And it is one of the most dangerous in the series. And that's saying something. If you can stay right on her, it's not that big of a deal because she has very few attacks that hurt really close up. She has those sword attacks, but they don't do too much. Keep whacking at her and eventually she'll go down. Difficulty is 40 out of 100. Boobs. Damn it! One of the few examples of a really good boss in Dark Souls 2, when there's only like probably six or seven really good bosses in Dark Souls 2, is Velstat the Royal Aegis, or Aegis, I don't know how to pronounce that word. It's a Pokemon. 
He's got a giant bell on a stick, and whenever he hits the ground with it, it makes a bell noise. And I don't know why, but my monkey brain finds that very funny, and I love it. He's just a basic big enemy with a big hammer, pretty much. Uh, he gives a pretty good tell. Not a huge tell of what he's going to do, but you have plenty of time to dodge whatever he does. But at half health, he's going to summon a bunch of darkness, and he's going to surround himself in it. Kind of like how Artorius does that, but we'll get to Artorius. And all of his attacks do a shit ton more damage now, and do dark damage. He also now can summon a bunch of little dark balls that he can shoot at you that do shit tons of damage, and they're really hard to dodge unless you're far away. This boss is really cool, and I enjoy it a lot. Difficulty is 43 out of 100. You see the little 5 down there in the bottom right of the corner? That is the rank of my favorite bosses in the entire series. That being said, Abyss Watchers is number 5, obviously. The Abyss Watchers are such a fucking cool boss. And the first time I played this game, they were one of the hardest for me. And just every subsequent time, they've just become easier and easier until they're literally a joke now. The first one, the first phase of this fight, one single Abyss Watcher is going to rush at you with a giant sword and a little dagger, and they're very dexterous with that little thing. You'll think, wow, this is kind of easy for one of the main bosses of the game, and you can walk around them. They have pretty good tells. Sometimes they'll hit you and they do a chunk of damage, but it's not too big of a deal. It becomes a little bit different when another one joins the fray. That way you have two of them fighting you at once. Your best bet here is to just dodge and try to get away from them both. Then a third one's going to join the fray third one is going to be aggroed to all of you, so you want to fight one while the third guy is trying to fight the other one. Then once you kill the main guy, it's not over, oh no 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 no. He's going to spawn fire on his sword and all of his attacks from the first phase are going to be greatly exaggerated and do shit tons more damage. This fight is so fucking cool and I love the score of this fight too. This is just an amazing fight, and it's my fifth favorite in the entire Dark Souls series. Difficulty is 45 out of 100. Kaneki's stupid ass is next at the Centipede Demon. This thing can either go really easily for you, or it's going to be really fucking annoying. More than likely the latter of those two. The Centipede Demon has a lot of things to his advantage. You can't walk in lava until you knock off one of his appendages. Two... He's going to run at you and he's going to make the camera freak the fuck out and you're not going to be able to tell what's going on. And three, he can lure you out into lava and you can't do a damn thing about it. He's going to constantly swipe shit at you like his little centipede arms and shit, but if you knock one off, you get the orange ring, the orange shard ring. I'm not going to look up what you get. I forgot the name. And then you can just fight him like a normal boss in lava. The lava really is annoying if you don't have the ring, though. Difficulty is 45 out of 100. In my opinion, the best boss in Dark Souls 2, although there is a close second way later, is the Looking Glass Knight. This guy is at the top of the Drangleic Castle, and God is it a spectacle. He has a bunch of lightning attacks where he's going to coat his sword lightning, and he's going to shock the rain on the ground to make a giant shockwave. It's really fucking cool. Sometimes he'll do a giant, like, attack where he just slices his sword straight in the ground. It's going to make a giant line of lightning. He has a giant shield that looks like a mirror, which you'll notice about halfway through the fight, he is going to summon an NPC, or if the servers ever come back up, an actual person to come fight you. This is such a cool fight, and I just love the way he looks. He was a decently large-sized dude in a bunch of fucking silver armor with a mirror as a shield. I also hear that the mirror can block back magic attacks, but I very rarely use magic in these games. So maybe that happens, I don't know. 
It's a really dangerous boss for sure, although his his normal attacks have just decent wind-ups. You can probably dodge him pretty easily, but once again, if you get hit, it's gonna fucking hurt. This guy is such a cool boss. Difficulty is 46 out of 100. Here's one that might be a little bit high compared to most people's lists, but probably not that much higher. The Demon of Song here is a frog with a skeleton in it, which is... unique. He has some basic attacks where he's gonna swipe at you with his frog claws, I guess. Or he's gonna stand up and fall right down on you, which has a l much larger hitbox than it looks like it has. And the run-up to this boss is fucking egregious as well. It's a Dark Souls 2 thing, the run-up. You can also spit water at you that does shit tons of damage, so be really active and on your feet here. Don't stand there and just try to hit him a fuck ton, because first of all, you can't hit him unless you hit him in the skull, which he only opens up his mouth every once in a while. Just go up, attack him a couple times, walk away, and just be sure to be careful of more attacks. Difficulty is 47 out of 100. If you think I'm going through reindeer fuckland to get this footage, you're wrong. This is the only footage in the entire series I'm not getting right now, because I refuse. Lud and Zalan, the king's pets, are literally just two avas, pretty much. And it's kind of stupid because it's at the end of the absolute worst run-up to a boss in any Dark Souls game, and that's saying something. All it is is basically two avas, and one starts to heal once it gets low after the first one's dead. And then the first one, you have a good chance to kill the first one before the second one even comes in the arena. So that makes things a little bit easier, but it's still really fucking annoying. Difficulty's 50 out of 100. Alright, here's another one that people are going to yell at me for putting so high. The stray demon in Dark Souls 1, you go back to the Undead Asylum after you've done everything, and you can fight this guy after you fall in a hole, which takes half your health pretty much. It's pretty much the exact same thing as the Asylum Demon, only you don't get a plunging attack. It's way stronger, and it gets a massive AoE attack that has some phantom range bullshit that I promise I get hit by it every time, and it hurts a little bit, but over and over and over and over, I can't dodge it. can't figure it out. It's impossible. That's not true, but I'm just a fucking idiot. He has pretty much very similar attacks and everything, only I find this fight way harder, and I usually die to it maybe mm, about once a playthrough, if that. But we're still in the territory of bosses being kind of hard, I guess. Not really. This is like this is like 6 out of 10 bosses, really. So I usually don't die to these guys, but if I do, this one's one that definitely gets me every once in a while. Difficulty's 51 out of 100. I have legitimately heard the argument that this is the hardest boss in the main game of Dark Souls 3. What? Bro, do you fucking fail slow ride on easy too? Like how? This boss is so easy if you have even the slightest bit of rhythm. It is such a rhythmic boss that you can literally dodge her blades just one after another over and over and over. It's such an easy read boss. Sure, it's fast and it does shit tons of damage. but. It's literally a rhythm. You could do it with your eyes closed pretty easily, actually, because it's just the exact same pattern every single time. At least with this, you just know what's going to happen. And yes, I fucking love this boss. Go figure. It's a boss with a good soundtrack. I'm starting to notice a pattern here with good bosses with good soundtracks being in my top tens. So here you go. Take a listen. Like, it's almost creepy how good this song is. It's like, a, you're literally dancing with this boss. It's such a cool idea and a good concept. How come Vort is, like, the counterpart to this thing? Vort, you know, the fat fucking pig guy? And then there's the dancer who's, like, the most elegant fucking boss in any Dark Souls game ever. 
Once she gets to half health, she's gonna pull out another sword from the ground and do a giant fucking whirlwind attack, where if you just run away, she can't hit you at all. To be fair, however, if you do get hit by it, it will stun like you to death. I'm pretty sure it's no way to avoid it. If you get hit by the first attack, you're fucking dead. But just run away when you see her about to do it. It's not hard. It's not that hard of a boss. Just get some fucking rhythm. Difficulty's 52 out of 100. The Iron Golem here is on top of the most annoying area in Dark Souls 1, which is Sin's Fortress. He's not too hard of a boss, but as soon as you walk in, he's gonna whip a fucking wind strike at your ass, and if you don't dodge it, it's gonna hurt a whole lot. You can also make this boss really fucking easy if you just attack his leg for a little bit, and then when he staggers, just knock him off the edge. Which, if you do that, truly the boss is pretty easy. However, he hits like a truck, and he can also do the exact same fucking thing to you. If he grabs you and you're near a ledge, goodbye. He will throw you right off that fucker. And that's happened more times than I care to announce. He's pretty big and lumbering, and it's kind of easy to tell where he's going to hit you from, but honestly, it's just not too bad. It's pretty average of a boss. I'd give it a 53 out of 100 on the difficulty meter. I don't know why I said it. Weird left that. Short entry here. This is pretty much a reskin of the Stray Demon, only it has a much smaller area, and he can knock you around a lot easier with those AoEs. Difficulty is 54 out of 100. XQC here is a boss that is in the later half of Dark Souls 3, and he can be considered pretty decently hard, actually, if you don't know what you're doing. His first phase is pretty easy, he just has a stick and he's gonna fight you one-handed with it. He really likes to jump up and crash down on you pretty easily, and it hurts, definitely. And he also has some basic frost attacks, too, that aren't that big of a deal, because they just don't have a hitbox for some reason. I promise I don't think I've ever even been hit by them, and if I have, it's almost unnoticeable. When he gets to phase 2, it gets quite a bit harder. He's going to do some dark tail whip attacks, he's going to use some frost breath attack that actually does have a hitbox that hurts like a fucking bitch if it hits you. He has a weird like rush attack that is really hard to tell what's going to happen because sometimes he'll be way over on the side of it and you'll still get hit by it. And he is just kind of a difficult boss. This is where bosses start to get a little bit harder, but not too bad. He does some really weird shit where he talks to you mid-fight, which is unheard of in a Dark Souls game. And he overall is just a weird skinny guy. He sprouts wings in the second phase too, but I don't think he really does anything with it. But it's really interesting. Difficulty is 59 out of 100. Oh, this is unheard of. A boss with a really good soundtrack that's not in my top 10? That's odd. Here you go, take a listen. Seathier is the spiritual predecessor to XQC of the last entry, and he's going to be immortal as soon as you walk in this arena. You have to turn around immediately if you are fighting him for the first time, or you have to run past him immediately if you've died, and go take that little glass thing out first, and then he becomes vulnerable. He has some really dangerous attacks where he can curse you by spiking you from the ground with crystals, and that can actually end your run immediately if you're not careful. He can just blow ice all over the place, he has a bunch of tails too that do massive fucking tail up attacks, and if you're trying to get the Moonlight Greatsword by attacking his backmost tail, good fucking luck, because I couldn't figure it out. I hit that thing the entire fight and didn't get it. This guy is a fucking monster if you're not careful. And that curse is real fucking annoying if it keeps happening to you over and over and over, which has happened to me before where I've gotten cursed three times in a row by this fucker. He is not the easiest boss, that's for sure. Difficulty is 60 out of 100. Could it be another controversial placement? Yes, it is. The Rune Sentinels is at number 37 on the last side of the Mathra. 
And this is three motherfuckers that will beat your ass up so hard. And I still, to this day, mess up every once in a while against these guys. You're going to walk in and you're going to be on this giant platform in the sky. You're going to want to fight the first guy just one on one. Trust me, it's easier than jumping down to fight all three at once. Take that guy out. He, sh he shouldn't be that hard to 1v1. And once you kill him, wait for the next guy. Don't jump down. Just wait. Wait on that platform for him to come up. As soon as he does, beat him the fuck up too. If you do all of this right, the third guy will get up there after you kill both of them if you're fast enough. And then you can 1v1 at every single one of them and this fight shouldn't be that hard. Now in theory, this is what you want to happen. Although sometimes you'll fall off the platform and that makes things 10 times harder. If you have to fight all three of them at once, good luck. Because they will be a, a coordinated trio of bastards that will, will push you against a wall and not let you breathe. 1v2ing them isn't that bad if you killed one of them and you have to fight the two remaining ones, but it's still really not ideal. However, they have this attack where they spin really fast with their hammer or whatever the hell it is. And it is such a bitch to dodge. One can also throw his shield at you, which is kind of weird. But all in all, if you can 1v1 each of them, it's not too bad. But it gets really bad when all three go together. Put your weapon in magic to make this fight a little easier. Difficulty is 61 out of 100. There's no you in this word. The Dragon Slayer armor here is not even really the Dragon Slayer armor, apparently. Apparently you're fighting the butterfly that controls it, I guess. And I don't know the lore of that thing, and I don't think anyone does. And if there is lore to this butterfly thing on the sky, please let me know, because I am confused. The Dragon Slayer armor here is basically a big knight-type enemy that you'd think, oh, it's just a average big knight boss. But he's a little bit tougher than that, actually. He's got a giant axe thing, I guess. And he will fuck you up with that thing. If it hits, it's going to chunk your health bar pretty good. It feels like I'm fucking fighting myself with this thing. This dude has his shield up so much, and it feels like I'm literally fighting a copy of myself. Because that's all I do is hold my shield up, because I'm a coward. But he has some pretty easily dodgeable attacks. He has some lightning attacks that have some phantom range bullshit. Around two-thirds to about one-half health, he's going to feign falling down, and once he does, he's going to fucking launch a counterattack as soon as you go near him so be careful of that it's not actually knocking him down he's just gonna beat you the fuck up like my dad did he also can launch little air projectiles kind of like how the iron golem would do that as well and those can fuck you up pretty good too the saving grace in this boss is he is very slow when he's not attacking also around the second phase the butterflies start launching random laser beams at you too so that's cool difficulty 61 out of 100 Four kings. Apparently there's more than four because they all share a health bar and it can go up to like six or seven, I guess. Four kings here have very basic attacks. They're going to be giant floating husks, which I found out they actually have legs. They're just really skinny. Those things under them are legs, I guess. They have normal darkness attacks. They have grab attacks. They have dark wall attacks. It's kind of hard to describe these guys. You just need a weapon that does a shit ton of damage. It's a DPS check. Difficulty 62 out of 100. Our first Dark Souls 3 DLC boss, which is crazy because they're all fucking impossible, is Half-Light Spear of the Church. This is going to be a weird fight because if we were online, you'd be fighting an actual person as well. But we're going to go off the NPC version, who I'm convinced is modeled after Sasuke. When you walk in, there's going to be a big dude that you just want to beat the fuck up while he's talking because I don't know what he does if he stays alive. But I don't want to find out, so kill him first. And he's going to summon a Painting Guardian. This guy's just going to be a pain in the ass, and he's going to keep respawning, so just kill him every time, honestly. He's not going to do much except throw daggers at you, and that's really fucking annoying. Your real fight here is going to be Sasuke Uchiha in the middle here, or an actual person if the server's ever come back online. And he's going to have these spear attacks that come out of the ground and do lightning or holy damage, I don't know which, tell me in the comments. And they hurt like a bitch if you walk in them, and they don't stagger you so you can just take damage. He has the Dark Eater Madeir Blade as well, so he can summon some purple fire and shit, that's really annoying. He also has a bow and arrow that can hurt like a bitch if it hits you as well. See how this can look like Sasuke and he has kind of like Sasuke type attack? I'm just saying. Difficulty is 63 out of 100. I dread this fight every time I play Dark Souls 2. The Belfry Gargoyles here are literally just a ripoff of the Bell Gargoyles, only instead of two, I think there's five of them. And they all come at you at once if you don't kill them fast enough. You can take these guys out one at a time if you're really fast, but you aren't going to be really fast, trust me. Once they all gang up on you, just try to take one on at a time. Just run away every time you don't get a chance to hit it. Once you do get a chance, hit him once or twice and walk the fuck away. 
do this ad nauseum. It becomes easier every one you take down, and eventually you'll whittle them all down. This is a really bad endurance fight though, so I always scramble through my inventory to just use random shit to heal myself. I'll just randomly find a dried root in my inventory and hope I can heal enough off of it. It's an endurance test for sure. Difficulty is 65 out of 100. In the place of Ornstunit Smo is this fucker here, Aldrich Devourer of the Gods. I guess I should mention that his top half is literally Dark Sun Gwynlin because he eats people, but we're not going to talk about that any more than we have to. Aldrich here has a couple unique attacks, one where he coats his little staff scythe spear thing in purple magic and he's going to slice you with it, and he can summon a bunch of little purple balls that will lazily float towards you, kind of like the Elden Beast, how he has that light thing. Although this is a lot easier to dodge that. They'll all float and rush you after a few seconds. He has an attack where he's going to shoot an arrow into the air that's going to run gonna rain down shit at you and it is the most annoying fucking attack possible because it will track you and if you're not careful it will just stun lock you to death. At around half health he's gonna ember himself pretty much and all of the attacks are gonna do a lot more damage. He also has now a life seal scythe from Priscilla I'm pretty sure that heals him if it hits you because of course. And that arrow rain attack is about three times harder to dodge because it will last twice as long and it goes faster. This fight sucks dick and I'm not a big fan of it. Not a annoying fight at all. This fight makes me want to gouge my fucking eyes out, because as soon as you walk in, there's going to be four rats on the ground that, one, not only petrify you, but they toxic you as well. So you have to take them out before the big rat comes down or you're just going to fucking die. So that means using a big sweeping weapon. I used a rapier for almost this entire playthrough, couldn't use a rapier in this fight. I beat Sir Lon on this guy, on this character with the rapier, and I got my ass whooped by the Royal Rat Authority more times than I can count. This fight sucks, but once you take out the four little rats, it becomes a little easier. If it wasn't for the rats, this would be so much lower, and the only reason that it's so high is simply because the rats toxic you. The petrification doesn't fucking matter. The toxic just takes your health down so fucking fast in Dark Souls 2, I swear to god. Difficulty is 69 out of 100, lol. Sin the Slumbering Dragon is the main boss of the first DLC of Dark Souls 2. My ex-girlfriend's name is Sin, I'm not even lying about that one, and she also broke my weapon whenever I was near her. You can ponder what that means for yourself. Sin the Slumbering Dragon here is just a big ass dragon with some poison fire breath, which is really unique actually. It burns pretty bad and it poisons you, but the poison doesn't matter. If you're lucky, he'll be really dormant and passive and he'll just stay on the ground. But if you're unlucky, he's going to be spending the entire fight flying around all over the arena, not letting you get a hit. So most of this fight just going to be you running to where you think he's going to land. He also can swipe at you and do some normal stuff. He has this charging attack that's kind of weird, and the hitbox is kind of janky on it, so you try to roll through it and it still hits you pretty much every time. So good luck with that one. This fight also, your weapons break, I want to say twice as fast, it could be even more than that. For some reason, because Sin has stone skin for some reason. And it could be quite an annoying boss. I usually don't die on this boss, but it can definitely be annoying and I can see how it can be really hard. Difficulty is 70 out of 100. Champion Gundir here is a lot like Iodix Gundir from the beginning, only he does not go into phase 2 and his phase 1 is way fucking harder. This guy is so fucking fast, he is the only boss I can think of that can actually juggle your stupid ass before you even hit the ground if you get hit. He has this charge attack where he just like shoulders you really fast and it really fucking hurts. And he can kick you really fucking hard too, which he tends to do a lot. This guy is extremely fast, and he will not let you get a hit in unless you are perfectly timing his dodges. You can parry this guy as well, but it's not as easy it seems like. He seems faster, I don't know if he actually is with his normal attacks, but you can still parry him. This guy can be a monster if you're not careful. When he gets into phase 2, he's gonna rush you with his giant fucking axe thing, and it will fucking hit you almost no matter what, unless you're perfect with that timing. And I mean absolutely perfect. This guy can be an absolute fucking nightmare if you get tilted and you just keep fucking up. Trust me, I would know. Difficulty is 70 out of 100. And I want to be a black sheep and like this boss so hard, but it makes it so hard to like it. This boss is the only boss in Dark Souls I'm pretty sure that you keep your progress even if you die. 
he only has pretty much 3 HP. And I'm serious, you have to hit him 3 times no matter what, and you kill him. Doesn't matter what weapon you have, you could fucking hit him with your fist if you really want to, and it'll kill him. Each side of him is going to have like a giant spear coming out of it. You're going to want to rush to each side of him and break that spear. Simple enough, right? Well, after you break the first one, he's going to start swiping you with his weird tree branch hand, and holes will start opening up in the arena. And he'll be swiping you down into him all the fucking time, because he's a fucking asshole. He also has a lava rain attack, or fire rain attack, I guess, where he's going to just spit fire from the ground. He's going to go straight up, and it can fuck you up pretty hard. That's not the problem, though. The fucking holes are the problem. Just, you'll randomly be swiped into him. It doesn't fucking matter. There's no tell. You just get swiped in. I somehow beat it on my first try on this playthrough, but that is so rare, I think, even for really good Dark Souls players. This boss is fucking annoying, because it's RNG. Just after you take out both of them, you just run back to the middle and jump down into the hole that has a root coming out of it, and you can climb underneath the Bed of Chaos and hit it for 1 HP and kill it. This boss sucks. Difficulty 71 out of 1. The record holder for the most deaths I suffered on my first playthrough of Dark Souls 2 is the Smelter Demon here. He's not the hardest boss in the world, but the run up to him is one of the more annoying ones in the series. And he has a fucking garbage hitbox system, so that's a great combo. He has these normal basic knight attacks that where he's going to swing a sword around and you can dodge pretty easily. He has an attack where he jumps up in the air and then slams the sword in the ground and then before he pulls it out he does a little shockwave attack that'll catch you off guard if you're not careful. At about one third health he's going to start lighting himself on fire and if you stand anywhere near him you're going to be pretty much poisoned the entire time. It's not poison, it's fire, but you get the idea. It's going to tick down your health. And then at about one third health left He's going to light his sword on fire, and all of the attacks are going to do ludicrous damage, and whenever he slams his sword out of the ground, it's going to make a giant shockwave outwards as well. This guy can be kind of a bitch if you're not careful, and you can tell really easily because the run-up is just such a long run back. Difficulty is 71 out of 100. The twin princes of Lothric here are no joke for damn sure. I know a lot of people would probably put this a little bit lower, but I struggle with these guys quite a bit sometimes. The first phase isn't so hard, it's just going to be the Elder Prince, and he has a giant sword, but he can't really walk, so he just teleports around and slams that sword into the ground at you. A pretty rhythmic fight, kind of like Dancer, only a little bit tougher. He has an attack where he's going to teleport pretty far away from you and then slam a sword into the ground and make a giant shockwave at you. That one's pretty hard to dodge. He also just likes to go right up on you really fast every once in a while too, so get ready to dodge at like all times. Just always be ready to dodge with this guy, because he could be right on you right before you even realize it. The second phase is a little harder when the little guy comes up, which is fun fact, I kind of look like the younger prince. And he will not let you kill his brother unless you kill him too. So even if you kill the elder prince again, he's going to revive him. And however, you have a good chance to take out the younger prince while he revives it. But he does a giant light shockwave right before he revives it. So be careful of that. Now he also casts magic from his back as well, like a little parasite on his brother's back. This boss can be quite annoying and it's kind of an endurance fight, honestly, in my opinion. Difficulty here is 71 out of 100. The first ever DLC for a Dark Souls game is the Sanctuary Guardian, and man is it intimidating. It doesn't have too much health, in fact it doesn't have that much at all. But the dude won't let you get a fucking hit on him and will beat the shit out of you. 
He has a couple of normal beast attacks where he swipes at you, but he goes on for a really long time with these combos. He's gonna swipe, 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 swipe. He's gonna keep going and going. <laughs> just make sure to try to go to his left or right side. He also has an attack where he just blows wind from his wings, and it can blow you backwards. It doesn't do any damage as far as I tell, but it definitely gives him an opportunity to come against you. He has an attack where he starts galloping into the sky and shoots lightning down at you. He has an attack where he stays far away and shoots lightning at you several times. He also has a poisonous tail that you can knock off for a free weapon that apparently is really good, but that someone in my chat always says, but I don't know because I've never used it. But the dude will either kill you extremely fast or you'll kill him extremely fast. There's no really in between. Difficulty 73 out of 100. Another top 10 boss here. In fact, it's my third favorite boss in the entire series and the second hardest final boss in the series. The Soul of Cinder here is a spectacle of a boss. It's in a giant field of flowers that you're going to fight yourself, pretty much. The Soul of Cinder here is a combination of Gwyn and your first character from Dark Souls 1, and everyone else that ever linked the flame technically, but we don't count them. The first phase isn't so bad. All it is is basically all the fighting styles from Dark Souls 1 versus you. He has a normal sword style where he just swipes at you with the sword. He has a spear style where he'll act like he has a spear and like shove it up your ass pretty much. That's pretty much what all the spears did in Dark Souls 1 anyway. He has a magic style where he's going to turn his sword into a staff, which is probably the easiest one to dodge. You can get shit tons of damage during that one. He has a curved sword style where he can use the wood grain ring from Dark Souls 1 and he can flip his ass around all over and he won't let you get it hidden, so just be careful of that one. He might have another one too, another attack style, but I can't remember it right now and I'm too lazy to go look. But all in all, this phase isn't too bad. It can, it can still beat the fuck out of you, don't get me wrong. All the attacks do flame damage too, so you have that to worry about as well. When he gets to phase 2, and this is my favorite part of the fight here, all the music dies out except for Gwyn's theme. When Gwyn takes over the Soul of Cinder, like Johnny Silverhand in Cyberpunk, and you're gonna fight him instead. Here you go, take a listen, and when the music dies down, you hear Gwyn's theme instead of the actual fight. What a fucking spectacle. That was probably a pretty long segment right there, because I just want you to understand what a fucking just somber mood it turns into. Because you're just fighting it just to link the flame again. It's a waste of time, pretty much. You're just prolonging the inevitable, or you're doing it to finally end the world and rid it of fire. It is just such an amazing fight. Gwyn's stage is quite a bit harder, where he has this extremely long combo that if you get hit by the first one, it'll keep juggling you, and you will not get out of it until the end. So just do your best to fucking run when you see him see him wind up and attack. He also has some thunder spear attacks, which will which will probably do a good amount of damage if you're not careful. One where he's gonna shoot one into the air and shit tons are gonna come down at you, just run left or right and dodge. He has one where he's just gonna shoot a long one at you that'll hurt pretty bad if it hits, so just dodge through it. And other things sort and other things like that. He has a grab attack which is insanely cool looking where he just explodes you when he grabs you. It's just such an amazing fight. Difficulty here is 75 out of 100. King Vendrick is here at number 23, I think. He is a husk of his former self, which is something that Dark Souls 1 did way better. Only this guy is a pain in the fucking ass and not at all fun, unlike Wayne. 
you have to find five giant souls throughout the entire game world to even stand a chance of doing decent damage. Sure, you can get three or four, and you can easily scrape by, probably, but it's a lot harder. Because every time you don't have a giant soul, with a max of five, your attack damage is halved, up to 32 times. You're going to find these giant souls from going around the world, going in giant memories, or killing the ancient dragon, we'll get to him later, and a couple giants in the bottom of the gutter as well. This guy is really slow, and he is really chunky. However, whenever he hits you, it can take out so much of your health that it's not even funny. It doesn't matter how much health you have. If you get hit by one of the sword swings, it's gonna hurt really fucking bad. And that's what makes it hard, because it's a fucking endurance fight if you don't have all five souls, which you probably won't. And it's going to be a big pain in the ass. And you have to do this to get the secret ending, too, so that's fine. Difficulty is 75 out of 100. Gonna be another boss that you have to find a bunch of shit outside of the boss arena to kill this guy? Yes, it is. The Burnt Ivory King here has a really cool entrance to his fight, and I love him for that. However, the annoying thing about him is you have to go around this entire massive DLC area to find three knights to help you out to fight this guy, or you're gonna be in for a shit ton of trouble. I'm not gonna show it here, but you have to fight like fucking 20 or 30 fucking burnt knights before you fight this guy every time. So you get a shit ton of souls if you really need them. Once you kill them all and lock all the gates up, he's going to come up from this giant oblivion gate thing, and he is going to be ready to fuck you up. He has some normal attacks with his little sword thing, and he's going to just launch it over you or launch it near you. It's not that big of a deal, honestly. But once he coats it in this magic thing, it's just fucking annoying because it has annoying hitboxes because it's just not there sometimes. And it does shit tons of damage. And if he grabs you, good luck because it's going to hurt like a fucking bitch. If you're lucky, you're going to have another knight with you to help you here but it's still really annoying i'm not gonna talk about this guy much because every time i go to here i'm just so wiped out from the fucking 30 fucking nights beforehand that i don't want to be fighting this guy. difficulty here is 76 out of 100 father mazgas here is a pain in the fucking ass the first time i did this fight on stream i think i beat it in two or three tries and someone in my chat was like it's the hardest boss of the game or it's pretty damn close and once i beat it i was like are you fucking wuss this is easy as fuck then every subsequent time I've played Dark Souls 3 after that, I'm like, oh, I see why. <laughs> he can be parried, weirdly enough, which is unique. And he is kind of a bitch because he's really fast, and he's just slightly faster than you would seem sometimes. So even if you dodge an attack perfectly, there's a chance you won't be able to hit it. At about half health, he's going to summon a stand. That's two anime slash manga references in this fight now. And it's going to mimic his every move, but do it slightly faster than him, from what I can tell. I thought it did completely independent things, but apparently it just mirrors whatever he's about to do, which is a really fucking cool thing to do. You can take it out if you want, but you don't have to because it's a little bit more passive if he has a standout. It's a really cool fight, and a lot of people struggle on this one, and I used to not be able to see why, but now I definitely do. This guy can be extremely unforgiving, and he's got a decent sized health bar actually too. Difficulty is 77 out of 100. For once, I don't think anyone's going to complain about the placement of the difficulty of this boss, but I think people will complain that it's not in my top 10 favorites. It's a cool boss. I enjoy Knight Artorias. It's a pretty cool idea, and it's, I think, based on Guts it's from Berserk as well. He's got some really cool attacks where he does these, like, flip things at you, where he, like, flips and does a front flip or a back flip, I don't know. 
and like strikes a sword down at you three times in a row before you can even get up. That's a really cool move and I really enjoy it. He buffs himself with darkness every once in a while and that's really cool and his attacks get so much harder to deal with then. I don't let him do that by the way, I just run up to him, smack him a couple times, he'll stop. And he just can be an overall son of a bitch to deal with difficulty wise. Why it's not in my top 10 favorites, I don't know. I mean, this is going to be blasphemous probably, but I don't really like the music track for this one. It's kind of just boring to me. It's somber, sure, but like not even in the cool way like Quinn or Soul of Cinder. I don't hate the boss. I still think it's good. It's probably still in my top 25 bosses in the series, but I just don't like it that much. Difficulty or 78 out of 100. This would be a more fitting final boss than Ashandra or Aldia, honestly, difficulty-wise at least. Throne Watcher and Defender are two bastards that are kind of annoying at the end of the Dark Souls 2. One of them is fast, however it stays passive a little bit, and it has some range attacks. The other one is very aggressive and chunkier, but doesn't do too much damage. The Throne Defender is the chunky one, and the fast one is the Watcher. They both are kind of hard, they definitely do some major damage, and they and they don't really go well together, so they're both kind of constantly attacking you. You don't really have too much of a chance to attack them individually. That's fine. Once you take one down, though, it's not dead forever. The other one can come revive it. So try to have them both at, like, half HP, and then kill one, and then after you kill that one, go kill the other one while he's trying to revive it. It's kind of an annoying fight. Short entry here, the blue smelter demon here is literally just a reskin of the normal smelter demon. He's at the end of the hallway of a DLC and it's really fucking annoying because it has shit tons of enemies in it and you're supposed to do a co-op but whatever. His attacks are basically the exact same only he delays them a little more and it's kind of harder. That's about it. Difficulty is 80 out of 100. Black Dragon Calamite is a really cool optional boss of the DLC for Dark Souls 1. He has a move that I really want to show off, but I can't find the footage of it, so you're just going to have to imagine it in your head. Where he like lights up his like Philosopher's Stone on his head and it, like makes you take more damage. It has one of the coolest sounding things in the game. I'll try to find some footage from the stream. Here we go. Oh, trust me, I thought the name was King. I know how that works. You fucking roll away from that fire. What the fuck? Well, that's a fucking cool move with your little philosopher stone there, but... I don't know if that's going to be in the final video, so if you see it, congrats. He has some basic moves for dragons. Actually, he has some pretty hard moves to dodge for dragons, where he's really fast. He'll swipe at you. He has this, like, dash attack that I don't know how to dodge, where he just, like, shoves his head straight forward. He has a lot of fire attacks. His fire attacks are really fucking dangerous, too. Because they, like, spread out really far. And if you're lucky, you'll be right near him when he does the fire attack, so he won't be able to hit you that much. That would be a great opportunity for you to hit him instead. And it's just an all-around kind of tough boss, and it's a pretty long walk back, too. Really cool fight, though, and you get a ring that makes you take more damage from everything if you kill him, because that's a right reward for this fight. Difficulty is 81 out of 100. Elena or Elana, the Scoiled Queen, is a bitch, and she is the first DLC boss of Dark Souls 2. She can be a huge pain in the ass. She has some normal attacks where she's going to shoot little dark balls at you like four or five in a row. She has an attack where she's going to swipe at you with her halberd, which I just realized was a halberd and not a scythe. She has an attack where she does this giant AoE, you'll know when it's coming because she's going to like put her hands up. It's going to have like a bunch of dark like balls just surround her. That's not the hard part, though. The hard part is she can summon things as well, because of course she can. The best one, honestly, is she can summon, like, a bunch of little pigs or something, and they won't do anything. That's the best case scenario, but I'm pretty sure that's, like, a 1 in 100 chance that, like, never happens. The normal one that you kind of want is she'll summon a bunch of skeletons. If you leave one alive, she won't summon anymore, and you can fight her just normally. She's a little more passive than the summons are on the field, so that's a good thing. Worst case scenario is she can summon Velstaff. Yeah, you know that boss that was, like, maybe 20 entries ago? She can summon him to fight you with him, which makes things ten times harder. If you don't get him, the fight isn't too bad, but generally you're going to get him because he's like a one in like two chance pretty much. And he is just not fun to deal with on top of Elena. Elena herself isn't that bad, but it gets really hard. Difficulty here is 82 out of 100. I remember when I first played this boss on stream, I was like, I kind of like this boss. I beat him like two or three times. I was like, I kind of like that boss. 
And then I remember looking it up, and people fucking hate this boss. People are disgusted by it. They spit on this boss. I was like, you guys are, are fucking full of shit. There's no way this boss is that bad. I enjoyed it a shit ton. I even said that on stream, I'm pretty sure. I think I said, I like the boss. It was pretty good. Getting this footage made me want to claw my eyes out. Um, this boss is a bitch. I really don't like this boss. He starts out as just one guy with a bunch of little wolves. You can take out the wolves pretty easy before you even start fighting him, honestly. Once you get to him, he's kind of annoying, but he's not the biggest problem, but we'll go over what he does anyway. He has this lion or wolf shield, I would assume, and a little short sword. The wolf shield is a really annoying thing because, once again, it feels like I'm fighting myself because he always has that fucking thing up, even just way more than the armor does. This guy just has that shield up constantly, and he'll like run and jump at you, and even if you try to attack him while he's running and jumping at you, he still has his shield up some fucking how. I don't get how that even works. He does have a couple opportunities that you can easily see where to attack him, and he's not too hard to fight on his own. He's not that big of a deal. But you want to kill him as fast as you can, because when he gets low, he's going to summon a giant fucking wolf. Which I believe you can actually hurt before the fight even starts if you fight him at the beginning of the DLC. I think he starts with lower health. I don't know, you can tell me if I'm wrong about that in the comments. The wolf is the pain in the ass, because if you have to deal with this jackass and the wolf at the same time, it's almost unbeatable. Because you have to deal with shield bitch over here, and a giant fucking enemy running at you. It reminds me of the Royal Red Vanguard, or Royal Red Authority, sorry. Because you have to focus on two things at once, and they are extremely fucking strong. Both of them. You can't get toxic, but you can still get fucking ganked. The wolf itself has not that many attacks, but it's really fucking annoying because it's super aggressive. And when about he gets to about half health, or maybe lower, I don't know exactly, he like conjures up a whirlwind, and it's like so fucking hard to dodge it. Because he just rushes at you faster than anything else, I'm pretty sure, in the entire series. He's a bitch. The only cool thing about this boss is, first of all, the arena is gorgeous. It's a bunch of flowers and an ice field that's really cool. And two, he has like a roar on his shield. Like whenever he like uses his shield, like it roars and it's really cool. I don't know how to describe it. Difficulty is 82 out of 100. Don't dislike the video. I know. I know a lot of people think this is the hardest boss in the entire series. I know. Don't dislike the video. I understand. Dark Eater Madir here is widely considered to be one of the, if not the hardest boss in the entire series. I get it. He's a very hard boss, and I agree with that. He is an extremely hard boss, but I think literally everything else that we have not covered is harder than him. That might be blasphemous. I understand, and I get where you're coming from. It's hard, I know. But I promise you, since my first time through the DLC, I have never died to him since. I died probably four or five times, maybe six or seven at the most, on my first playthrough to this guy. And yeah, it was annoying. But I have never died since, and I've played through the game three more times, and I have killed him on my first attempt each time. I understand. This is my list, and I don't want any hate. Why am I still getting hate? Now, onto the actual breakdown of why I don't think he is the hardest. If you stand near his head, I promise you, it becomes a lot easier. And I understand, it's scary to stand near the giant fucking dragon's head, I get it. But it is a lot easier if you do it. Because if you try to be swiping at his legs and trying to stand under him like you would with a normal beast boss, it's not going to work. Because he is extremely aggressive and he can move his arms and legs pretty much independently and swipe under him pretty easy. Or rush you really fast and his entire body is a hitbox and it will hurt. But if you stand right next to his head, sure, he can still rush you, but his legs and arms are pretty much useless. You have to worry about him dashing forward, him blowing fire, and him doing his laser attack, and his AoE in a second place. That's it, though. He is a massive health bar. I want to say it might be the biggest health bar in the entire series. I think Ancient Dragon might be a little higher. We'll get to him really soon. But he has a huge health bar for sure. Use bleed on this guy. Trust me, it doesn't make sense considering he's made of rocks it looks like but bleed works really well against him stand near his head and just keep attacking his head when he does his fire attack and stands up on two hind legs you'll be able to tell he gives you plenty of time just run away he's not gonna be able to do anything if you just run away the fire won't hit you probably he has an attack where he f flies up into the air this attack can be dangerous but it's easily dodgeable if you just run straight forward and to the left a little bit the fire will miss you and you'll be able to run back right towards him 
is laser attack is the only attack that I don't really know how to dodge extremely well. I got lucky in this case, and I got lucky in most attempts, honestly. But if you're standing near his head, it probably won't hit you. He'll put his head forward and blow a shit ton of fire, and then I'll start using the giant dark laser thing. Which I'm pretty sure one-shots you almost no matter what. So as long as you don't get hit by the laser, you should be fine in this fight, honestly. When he gets to about one-fourth, maybe one-fifth health, he goes down and whatever attack you do, do the visceral on him, it will insta-kill him. I understand this boss is extremely hard, but I find everything else a lot harder. Difficulty is 85 out of 100. An intimidating boss for sure, the ancient dragon here is harder than my deer in my opinion. And yes, I just said that up loud. And the FBI is here, oh great. He is not much to talk about, but I find him a lot harder because he's just bullshit and unfun. At least my is really cool and fun. The ancient dragon's not. You have an obnoxious run up to him, of course, it's stressful too. And it's just kind of a bitch to deal with because he has an attack that like literally will just two shot you and it can hit you one after another immediately, so that's fun. He's got a massive fucking health bar. It might be bigger than Madeer's, I don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure it is. And he is just annoying little bitch. He doesn't have any attacks. If you stand in front of him, you're a fucking idiot, first of all. Uh, and he just blows fire at you the attack time. It's the opposite of Madeer. There's going to be a little indentation between two of his little clawsies on his back hind legs and just stand there and keep attacking him. You'll be able to kill him pretty easily and by easily I mean you'll still get your ass kicked probably three or four or five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, maybe eleven, twelve times, maybe thirteen. And it's just really annoying because the hitbox on the fire when he flies up, which is the only attack he's going to do if you do this strat, will pretty much two shot you. And it's if it hits you immediately, it will two shot you and still knock you. And then you have to run all the way back. Isn't that fun? I hate this boss. Difficulty is 86 out of 100. Probably the largest contrast in how cool a boss is and how much I like to do it is this boss. I hate fucking doing this boss. Every time I get to it, I am dreading it. I fucking hate dealing with the demon princes. Really cool fight. The design of the boss is one of the best. It is so cool looking. It's not in my top 10 because I hate doing it, but it's a cool looking boss for sure. When you jump down, there's going to be two bosses down there, the demon in pain and the demon from below. Trust me, kill the demon in pain first. Just trust me, it's not going to make sense, but kill him first. Depending on which one you kill, the second phase of the fight becomes easier or harder. One of them is going to rampage on you at all times while the other one casts poison on you. Or maybe it's toxic, I don't know. And it is really fucking annoying because they will both sometimes just overlap the aggression phase and just kill you because they have two just giant fucking monsters rushing you at the same time. And then sometimes they're both passive for some reason. It's, it's just RNG it feels like sometimes. But kill the demon in pain first. If you kill the demon in pain first, the second phase he's going to respawn as a giant demon and he's going to have some basic attacks and a giant fireball attack that hurts but you can deal with it pretty easily. If you kill the other one first, he's going to have some bullshit attacks that will just constantly will your health down and kill you. So just trust me, kill the demon in pain first. I always get mixed up which one I want to kill first, so usually the first time I try it every time, I'm like, oh, I need to kill the uh, demon in below first. Yeah, that's right. And then I realize I'm a fucking idiot every time. And I'm this boss is such an annoying piece of shit boss. Cool looking for sure, but it's still annoying. Difficulty is 90 out of 100. It's been a while since we've seen a top 10 favorite boss here, right? The Dark Lurker is a hidden boss in Dark Souls 2, and I really enjoy it. And there's even a boss higher up on this list that's harder that I like more. That's in Dark Souls 2, surprisingly. So I'll get ready for that one way later. This boss is really cool. I really like the design of him. It's really cool. He's like in a white hood, and he's got like these angel wings. It's really cool. The boss music's pretty cool, too. Here you go. Take a listen. That was cool, wasn't it? I didn't hear it, because editing, so you could be... So you had fun there, I didn't. I'm gonna go kill myself. Ah! He has some basic moves where he does this Kabuto Chakra Blade thing, where he puts his hand and makes it a giant fucking light beam sword. That's really cool. It's decently fast, and it does a good amount of damage, so be careful of it, but you can easily sidestep or dodge under it. It's not too big of a deal. He has this giant laser attack that like, you far from Kingdom Hearts 1 where he just like shoots it down to the ground in a stable position. It's not hard to deal with it at all. And it's not that bad of a boss at all until you get to about half health. 
where he splits into two and he does some more annoying attacks. He does these attacks in phase one and they're easy to dodge too. But when you get two at the same time, it's really fucking annoying. He'll shoot dark balls at you. He can do this giant dark ball that does like fuck tons of health and it hurts like a bitch if it hits you and almost kills you in one shot. He does this one where like does fire homing attacks on you too and it's really dangerous. Both share the same health bar though, so that's a little bit better. If you can get one to do the giant dark laser attack, you can go to fight the other one one on one again because the dark laser doesn't do anything. And it becomes a little easier. I really enjoyed this boss. In fact, it's like one of my favorites. Difficulty is 90 out of 100. At the very 10th hardest boss, very 10th, at the 10th hardest boss in the Dark Souls series, we have Gwyn, Lord of Cinder. Now this boss admittedly isn't that bad at all if you can parry really well, but I'm not the best at it, so <laughs> parrying, it makes this fight simple as fuck. Well. But if you just want to fight him and get a parry in every once in a while, it's really hard. Gwyn's going to immediately rush and jump at you. You can parry him really easily this way. You have a huge opening if you parry him while he hits you right here, but he's going to jump right at you as soon as you walk in the arena. He's really fucking annoying. He has this attack where he just like swipes at you over and over and over and it does fuck tons of damage, it's a combo. He has an attack where he just kicks you and I'm pretty sure just insta-fucking deletes your shield if you have a shield up. So that's fun and then he can just fuck you up pretty hard after that. He has an attack where he just like straight stabs you with fire sword and it's fucking annoying. He's just overall, he doesn't have a lot of attacks when I think about it, but he's just extremely dangerous because he is unbelievably aggressive. He does not let you get a heal in no matter what. The only time I can find a chance to heal is after I parry him and stab him. It's a really hard fight. Difficulty is 90 out of 100. Einzon Gol comes in here at number 9. Weirdly enough, the last 9 bosses, we have 3 Dark Souls 1 bosses, 3 Dark Souls 2 bosses, and 3 Dark Souls 3 bosses, which is kind of funny. This guy, I'm going to be probably made fun of for putting this high, and I understand this is just the boss that pisses me off absolutely the most, because I just can't figure out a strat here. Honestly, it's just hope you don't fucking die. As soon as you walk into the arena, you're going to lose about half your health because you have to fall down from a huge gap. So that's a cool way to artificially make the fight harder. As soon as you land, if you hear a scream, immediately start running and dash as soon as you see him stab the ground. Because he's going to stab the ground and a giant sword's going to come up and toxic you. Because that's also very fun. And he can continue to do this over and over and over. So if you ever hear like a scream, like a stock horror movie scream, just run and dash as soon as he stabs the ground. It's really fucking annoying. He has some normal swipe attacks that don't do that much damage. And they probably won't hit you if you're right up on him. So that happens, I guess. He has an AoE that does a good amount of damage, but if you block it, you'll probably stay on your feet at least. And you're like, well, this sounds like a normal boss. It might be a little tough, but it's not too hard, right? Well, all while this is happening, you have about 30 skeletons at a time just rushing you the entire time and just constantly ganking you. I, I just can't get the hang of this boss, no matter what it is. Every single time, no joke, I do this boss, it takes me two or three tries because I can't figure it out. I don't know if it's better to have immunity and extremely heavy armor or if it's better to be lighter on my feet and have the monkey ring. I just can't figure it the fuck out. It pisses me off really bad. The only moment of reprieve you have is as soon as he does the AoE, it hits all of his skeletons too. So if you don't get knocked down, you have a huge opportunity to do fuck tons of damage to him. Difficulty is 92 out of 100. Dank Squad, or so that's the only thing I hear them called online, is the only boss I think in Dark Souls history for me that made me take a break from the series. I remember doing all the DLCs right after I beat all the main games, and I was like, oh, I'll just blow through all these. After I got here and beat these guys, I think I took like a one and a half year break. Because I just, this boss pissed me off so bad. It's not fun, it's just plain annoying. There's going to be three people in this room. There's going to be a dude with a bow, there's going to be a dude with a normal like bleed sword, and there's going to be a dude with fucking massive armor. And they all rush at you at once. It's basically a three on one NPC fight. It's supposed to be done multiplayer, but if you're a man, you have to do it alone. And that's really fucking annoying. There is only one strat that I can think of that works here. Get them all together and then jump off onto the little water below. They're all going to follow you except the bow guy. As they jump down, rush up and attack the bow guy as much as you can until they get back up. Then repeat. Keep doing that over and over until you take out the bow guy. As soon as you do that, go back down and then do the same exact thing and try to take out the guy with the bleed swords over and over and over. 
every once in a while you'll be able to get one or two hits in because it's not that bad without the bow guy trying to shoot you. Once you get one of them down, honestly, the fight becomes a lot easier. But just take down the guy with the swords next and then take out the guy with the bass up armor. I don't really have any more thing. I don't really have anything else to say about this boss. It fucking sucks. The difficulty is 93 out of 100. My favorite boss in the entire series is Ornstein and Smoke. It is also the seventh hardest in the series, in my opinion. This boss is just so perfect. This is the best duo boss you could ever think of in a video game. Because they are so good together, and they have such a big weakness together, and it's amazing. It's extremely fair, but extremely challenging. The only thing I dislike about this fight is the run-up. I know I'm not going to count the run-up for how difficult the boss is, but I can count on how much I like the boss. And the run-up makes this boss a little bit lower than it could have been. Because this isn't my favorite boss of all time, trust me. But this is my favorite boss in Dark Souls, for sure. Ornstein and Smo together are the perfect team. One's extremely slow, and one's extremely fast. The slow one does massive damage, the fast one does decent damage, but not anything to be too worried about. You want to take down Ornstein first, in my opinion. This will be important later. But Ornstein's going to rush at you. He has this attack where he just like rushes at you without touching the ground. If you see him do that, be ready to roll at the exact right time to dodge him. You get a free hit if, if Smo's not near you. They have some basic attacks. Ornstein can also shoot lightning bolts at you that seem to just fucking have a unique hitbox, I guess would be a good way to put it. And it's really hard to dodge, but they don't do too much damage, so once again, not to worry. Smo just has some normal attacks where he's going to hit you with a hammer, or rush at you with it, or he'll do an ass crash, all of which are very dangerous. But if you're just a little bit fast, you'll be fine. It's not that big of a deal. You just want to attack Ornstein when Smo is not near you. That is the best way you can do it. Use the pillars to break it up which is the best thing they could have done for a boss. It's also the best boss we have ever fight. This is just such a good fight, and I love it. Once you take down Ornstein, Smo is going to get lightning attacks instead. Or if you kill Smo first, Ornstein's going to become a giant. If Smo's last alive, all of his attacks will get lightning stuff, and as Ash Crash, it becomes way more dangerous because it can easily hit you with a bullshit hitbox. Although it's still easier than fighting them two at the same time. Ornstein, if he becomes big, makes it a little bit tougher because on top of being fast, he's also now massive, does a lot of damage, and he has an ass crush, because of course he does. I don't think FromSoft understood what they were doing when they made this boss and how iconic it would be, but it's such a good boss. My recommendation also here is to use a big weapon because every hit you have is going to be a long time in between each hit. And if you do massive damage with the hit, it's going to be a lot easier. Difficulty is 93 out of 100, and I love it. The second hardest boss in Dark Souls 2 is Fume Knight. Really cool boss. I really enjoy this. I know a lot of people find this to be the hardest in Dark Souls 2, but I think it's narrowly beaten out by somebody else. What a cool fucking fight though. This is such a cool fight. I enjoy the location and everything. It's at the bottom of this giant tower, and he's got this massive looking sword, and a little sword too, because you can't be too dexterous, right? He is maybe one of the most punishing bosses in the entire series. If you get hit by that big sword, you're gonna wish you died, because it will fucking hurt so bad. His little sword isn't as dangerous, and he might swipe at you a little bit with it, and it's not that big of a deal if you get hit by it, but you gotta run and roll out of the way as soon as you get hit by it, because there's a good chance it's gonna follow up with the giant sword. At about half health, he has one of the coolest fucking secondary phases in any bosses. He's going to turn his sword into a fire sword, I guess? I don't know. And it's going to use only the big sword now, pretty much. It's going to have a couple different unique attacks, where he can summon a bunch of little dark balls and do a massive AoE at the same time that are going to spin in the circle clockwise. I love this attack. It makes a really cool noise, and it does. The, I just like the way the balls like shift around, and it makes you really think about where you're going when you step in. It's such a cool attack. You can also code his sword in a massive flame, and if that hits you, good luck, you're going to be in a lot of pain. I really, really enjoy this fight, and I don't know why the sound he makes when he does that giant AoE with the balls is one of my favorites in the series. 
What a cool boss, and what a way to end off the second DLC of Dark Souls 2. Difficulty is 94 out of 100. The Nameless King is the hardest non-DLC boss in any Dark Souls game. The Nameless King, first of all, what a fucking cool name, starts out as the King of Storm where he's going to be riding a giant lightning dragon, which is weird because I'm pretty sure that the dragons in Dark Souls are like, they're mortal enemies lightning, but whatever I guess. And that thing is not that hard at all. Actually, I would put this way lower for just the first phase. I've gone through this first phase a couple of times without even getting hit. It's extremely easy to deal with. The dragon will fly up. It's almost like the guardian dragon in a way. A little bit tougher. He'll fly up, do some normal attacks. He might rush really fast forward in front of himself, and that's a little dangerous, I guess. But other than that, it's nothing to be worried about. He sometimes strikes lightning down from the sky, but if you can hear as soon as the lightning strikes, roll out of the way and you'll be absolutely fine. It's not that big of a deal at all. In fact, it's pretty easy. When you see him about to do a fire attack, rush to his head and just attack as much as you can, because he won't do a damn thing about it. And he'll go down like a ton of bricks if you do it that way. It's a very easy fight. It's King of Storm. When he becomes the Nameless King, though, it is intensely hard. He will do some extremely rhythmic attacks, kind of like the Dancer that you can probably roll through and stuff. But once he gets to a certain point, he's going to start stalling attacks, which I hate. I hate when things do this, because it catches me off guard and I'm not good enough to deal with it. He'll start delaying attacks, like he'll pretend to start swiping and then he'll delay for a second. And then he'll swipe, and he'll catch you off guard and hit you. This boss is probably the second biggest user of this strategy. The biggest user is the next one, so get ready for that entry next. He is extremely dangerous. Every attack he does does some lightning bullshit damage too, which is really dangerous. He will just rush around. He's extremely fast and aggressive too. He reminds me of Gwyn. Hmm, I wonder why. And he does a lot of lightning attacks that are just unbelievably hard to dodge. You can do it if you get the rhythmic timing down and have a little bit of wiggle room between every time you do it. He won't be extremely hard. I feel like he becomes easier every time you beat him because it is decently easy, but in the first time, God, this was really hard. I really like this boss, but it's not in my top 10. It's a really cool boss, so I know a lot of people like it. Difficulty is 94 out of 100. Sir Alon is here at number 4, and he is the most dangerous Dark Souls 2 boss by far. Remember how I mentioned the Nameless King likes to delay his attacks every once in a while? This guy does it constantly. Just he will, you cannot be ready for some of his attacks. You have to be like on the ball, ready to dodge whenever he starts doing it. Because if you are one second off, he is going to break your fucking neck. This guy gives me heavy Spencer for my Carly vibes and I don't know why. I think there's a gas light in here. But he is really dangerous. He has some normal attacks with his giant Odaichi sword where he's going to hold it over his head and ram it into your skull. He can go anywhere. He can go extremely fast right across the arena right at you. It doesn't matter where you are, you're never safe from this guy. You have no chance to heal unless you dodge an attack and immediately spam your heal key. Because there's no way in hell you're going to get it off otherwise. He will make sure you are punished if you try to do it in any other location other than right behind him. You can only attack him maybe once or twice after each dodge. He is an extremely punishing boss, and he is the biggest example of punishing greed in the entire series. He is an attack where he's going to stab you and he's going to buff yours, buff himself. So if he hits you and he starts glowing darkness, I don't know why I said it so weird, beware because all of the attacks now do shit tons more damage. And the best thing I can say about that is just don't get hit lol. And good luck with this fucking boss, he is extremely dangerous and anywhere across the arena you are not safe. Something to be said, I guess, that's funny. If you kill him without taking a hit, he commits seppuku at the end, and that's kind of funny. Difficulty is 94 out of 100.
You can yell at me for using Sif, but you're kind of supposed to use Sif in this fight, so I'm gonna count this as being a win. This fight can be extremely hard, or just very hard, depending on what you do. If you summon Sif and you use the amulet, or the pendant, whatever, that you find in the map, it becomes a little easier, but it still is extremely hard. But if you do it without that, it becomes, like, one of the hardest bosses in the series. Manus here has the range of a god. Like, if you you think you're safe, it's just like a lawn. If you think you're safe at somewhere in the arena, you're not, because you can get there in, like, 0.1 seconds. Or he can stretch his arm all the way over and, like, grab you or some stupid shit. Remember that attack that the Soul of Cinder had where he can juggle you and like before you even hit the ground so you can't get out of it? He has that too, only it's way stronger and more dangerous. Manus is a motherfucker and at about two thirds health or so he's going to start using dark magic that if you don't have the pendant and know how to use it extremely fast, he's going to destroy you with that shit. He has one where it's just going to rain darkness down which isn't that dangerous. He's going to have one where he like puts darkness all around the arena, it's all going to home into you, and that's the dangerous one if you don't have to because it just hits almost no matter what. And then he has a couple other slightly different dark moves, but I don't remember them, so I'm not going to recite them here. And every attack he does is really fast despite his size, and it's really dangerous. He is a son of a bitch, and he is extremely hard, and he is the hardest boss of Dark Souls 1 by far, and a great way to end the Dark Souls 1 DLC. Manus is extremely dangerous, and I am very scared of him, and every time I get here, I'm like, fuck, I don't want to do this fight again. Difficulty here is 95 out of 100. Slave Knight Gale comes in at number two, and is it any really surprise? Slave Knight Gale is the epitome of the normal knight boss, only it is the hardest, by far. He starts phase one not really as a knight type boss, but he starts it as kind of like a beast knight type boss, it's kind of in the middle. He reminds me a lot of Lavos Center from Dark Souls 2 in phase one. The first phase for this guy isn't that bad, like, at all. He is pretty slow and you can dodge attacks pretty easily. He has one attack that locks you in a combo and that one's really dangerous, but other than that it's not too bad. It is, it does shit tons of damage, but it's not too bad because you can just like dodge around it. It's really slow and you can beat it pretty easily this first phase. He has an attack where he just jumps up and like stabs across the map though and that's pretty dangerous. So I guess you can consider that as pretty hard. It is not the easiest for sure but it is not the hardest part of this fight, is this first phase. The second phase, he is a lot harder, like extreme. He's going to become a full night boss, and you're like, oh, it's just a night boss, well, I fought like thousands of these things. And it is not. Because every attack he does, you have to worry about the actual attack, and his cape has like a little after image too. So it'll just randomly clip you and whittle your health down before you even notice. Because the cape just randomly it just is right after the attack. So if you're even slightly off with a dodge, it's going to clip you. And you won't even notice, probably. And before you realize it, your health's going to be pretty damn low. He's a destructive disc type attack where he just like throws these light discs at you. And I don't know if they do too much damage because I usually don't get hit by them. And I definitely don't in this clip. But I would assume you don't want to be hit by them. He has a repeating crossbow. Because, of course, guts, I guess. And... Everything he does is extremely hard to deal with and dangerous. Even his normal sword swings do fuck tons of damage, and if you don't notice your health slow because of the fucking after image cape thing, you're gonna realize pretty damn soon. The ma the music here is amazing, I'm not gonna cut it in this one, I'm not gonna edit it in, because you can just hear it the entire time. It's just such a great boss. This is my number four favorite boss in the series, as you see by that bottom right thing, and I just... I love it so much. His phase 3 is even more dangerous, because although he has that knight thing still, he has elements of the first phase in it as well. He starts like going berserk, huh? and it's really fucking annoying. 
He has a massive AoE attack. He can like summon a bunch of little dark balls that like pull him towards you really fast and fuck tons of damage as well. And he is extremely dangerous. There's also lightning striking at the same time in his, in his third phase for some reason. I've never been hit by those, but I assume you can be hit by them. And it's just extremely, extremely hard to deal with. If you notice, his health bar is fucking massive too. It is the biggest health bar of anything like human size in the series. I don't really notice it that well that much because if you just imagine it as three health bars because there's three phases, it's not that bad. Just keep going and you'll eventually whittle him down and kill him like the beast that he is and take his dark soul. I like this fight thematically a lot as well because after you beat the entire DLCs, both DLCs I should say, you would expect some reward or something. But there's no paradise for you to escape to here. What you'll find here, what you'll find is another battlefield. Difficulty is 96 out of 100. If you know me and my channel, and you've seen the streams of this game that I've made, you knew this was coming for number one. Sister Freed and Father Ariandel are the absolute most dangerous boss on this list. And they scare the fuck out of me, and I love it. They are one of my favorite bosses. They're so close to number one on my favorite list. It, honestly, you could, you could exchange number one and two if you want. They're really close. Stage one of Sister Freed and Father Ariandel is just Sister Freed. With some haunting music playing in the background, it's just a, a nun, I, I guess. She's a sister, so I guess a nun. She's going to be in here with just a giant ice sight. It's not too dangerous, but every attack she does is going to frostbite you, and it can slowly build up and break you and hurt your stamina pretty bad if you do that. She's not too bad. Every attack she does doesn't do too much damage, but she can hit you several times in a split second, and it'll really fucking hurt if you're not careful. She has a couple normal attacks. Her grab attack is one of the most visceral fucking attacks I've ever seen in the first phase. And there's an even more disgusting one in the third phase that's even more terrifying. And yes, this boss has three phases, so be ready for that. It's a fucking endurance fight. The first phase isn't that bad, though. She has an attack where she's going to turn invisible. She's going to put her scythe in front of her, and she's going to jump behind you. I had such a fucking hard time with this fucking move, because I always was like, okay, I gotta listen to where she's landing. Which you can do that, but she always almost always lands right behind you. If she isn't, you have to listen to where she is though, which is a dangerous thing to do. If you immediately turn your camera around as soon as she jumps, you can easily find her. And if you go up to her and you see her and turn her uninvisible, don't attack her right away. Try to get behind her and get a backstab. You'll still be able to hit her a couple times while she's still getting up from the backstab. That is the best thing to do, honestly. She has a move where she's going to drag the scythe across the ground and you have to dodge at the exact last second. I suck at this fucking move. I didn't get any footage of it in this clip, but god, I, I can't fucking deal with that shit. That's the grab attack, by the way. 
When her phase 2 comes, it becomes extremely dangerous. In fact, this is probably the second hardest phase in the entire series. I wonder what the first phase is. Where Arendelle's gonna unstrap himself from the chair, because, okay. And he's going to have a giant bowl of soup or fire or something, I don't know. And he's gonna keep slamming it down on you. This dude has a fucking massive hitbox to you. If he's just walking forward, he might hit you and take your entire fucking health bar down. It's really fucking hard to deal with. This fight isn't unfair even in the slightest, like some of the other ones in the top 10 here. It is extremely fair, but it is the most punishing boss in the entire series. Because if you make a misstep, especially in Phase 3, which we'll get to, you're dead. There's no chance to heal whatsoever. If you have to deal with Phase 3 and you have no healing, good fucking luck. I try to have at least 7 Estus. I think I had 5 or 6 in this forge and I was okay, but it's really fucking hard to do. Back to Phase 2 though, sorry for getting sidetracked there. He is not going to start slamming his soup around on the ground and it makes giant AoE as a fire and it's really dangerous. All while fucking Sister Freed is in the background just randomly casting ice spells on you which can fucking hit you and do massive fucking damage and frostbite you so your stamina is not going to be able to do fucking jack shit either. And your best bet here is just to fucking focus Father Arendelle as much as you can. I can't beat this boss without a fucking bleed weapon. And that's fucking disgusting that I have to resort to that. Even though I resort to every other boss before I do that. At one point, Sister Freed's going to start healing him. You can either go and attack Sister Freed to stop the heal, but you can honestly out-damage the heal at this point in the game. So you can do that if you want to. Father Arendelle sometimes will stagger. Do your best to fucking follow up on the stagger. Try to do a visceral on him because it'll do lots of damage, and it gives you a and it gives you invulnerability frames, which you fucking need in this fight. Her phase 3 is the hardest thing in the entire series. She is a little bit too fast for me. Remember how I talked about how the Nameless King is just slightly too fast? This fight is also like that. Every single thing that this girl does is the most fucking dangerous thing that could possibly happen. Because even if you dodge around, it, you, sometimes you won't be able to hit her. Because even because she is just too fast. She has two sides in this phase, because it's better than one, I guess. And she is twice as fast with them. Every single attack she does... Remember how in the first phase, if she hits you a couple times in a split second, you're dead? It's this, it's that, but twofold. Every single attack that she does can kill you, probably. She has an attack where she can do this thing where she just rushes at you, and she can grab you and just slices your head off pretty much with both sides. It's so cool looking. I didn't get the footage here, but it's so cool. I love it. It's so fucking cool, bro. And it's just awesome. Enough fanboying about this, though. Uh, she has some ice attacks and some fire attacks, too. She's gonna jump up and do a massive fucking fire AoE that will rush towards you afterwards as well, and that's really hard to dodge. The ice attack's a little easier. She's gonna jump up and do some ice attacks. You have a good opportunity to run at her and attack her then. It's really fucking hard to deal with, though. She can just randomly spawn ice on the ground, too, which can break your fucking stamina, which is great, because that's always very fun. And this boss is just fantastic. This is bo this boss, I believe, is the second or third hardest boss I've ever fought. Only to Melania, Goddess of Rot, and Elden Ring, and maybe Yazora from King Hearts 3. This boss is such a fucking spectacle, too. I love this boss so much, and I think it's very much deserving of my number two favorite and the number one hardest boss in the Dark Souls series. Difficulty is 99 out of 100. I appreciate everybody for watching. I implore you to check out the Elden Ring boss ranking if you haven't seen it yet, and I appreciate everyone for watching. Have a good day, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.